Are we live? Are we live? I think so. Almost. Are we there? We're there. <laughs> We're there, are we? I'm just checking on Google just to make sure. Hello. Yes, we are. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Oh, yeah, we've made it. We're here. Yay. We're on Goblet of Fire. Right. Let's put this bad boy in the background for the time being. So we're going to do the same thing as before. We'll put it on mute for now. Going to do the same thing as before, which is we'll wait for people to jump into the chat. So we'll talk about a few other things quickly. And uh, you can enjoy the incredible game that is Goblet of Fire in the background. So, yeah, enjoy yourselves. <laughs> We could, right. just, we could decide to just review another game. We could. Yeah. We, don't, mean... we don't have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we and could yet... just do anything. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So, yes, uh, I guess we're really interested today to see what you guys will think of Goblet of Fire. Because, of course, Goblet of Fire, in my opinion, is a bit of a... Well, it's mostly negative, but there are people that are quite positive about this game, believe it or not. I know it seems a bit strange, doesn't it? But yeah, there are people that love it. So what do you guys think? That's what we're interested to know. What do you guys mm -hmm. think? And I think Phil is pretty interested to know as well. <laughs> yeah. So I I played this game less than Alex had because I don't I don't remember us having this when I was young, but my brother said that we did. Um but maybe if we did I didn't play it for much or maybe we borrowed it or something. So your knowledge, I assume, is probably going to be greater than mine. But I've gone through it all. I've prepared my thoughts and feelings. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I'm excited to see if that aligns with what everyone else thinks. To be honest, you say my knowledge is extent on this, and it is, unfortunately. It's probably like a tiny bit more than mine. <laughs> it, it's unfortunate that I have to actually say that, yeah, <laughs> I do have quite a lot of knowledge of this game. <laughs> I don't you consider that a, lot that a good of technical thing. Knowledge. Yes. Oh God, don't. I don't want to hear. It. Right. I want to make this clear from the very beginning. Anyone that asks what's going on with the HP4 guide, it's being made. It's in the process of being made. That's the end of it. No more info on that. No more talk about it. It's being made. That is all you need to know. <laughs> so that's that out of the way. <laughs> I don't want to hear any more stuff about technical point of this game. It has driven me nuts trying to fix this absolute heat. Oh my god. I'm sorry, Voldemort already <laughs> does the face. I just... <laughs> oh, Chip Games. Do you... Are you on TikTok? Because I think I had one of your TikToks come up on my For You page the other day. He is, yeah. He does right, Simpsons I, hit it, and run on it. Yeah, I think it was hit and run. Hmm. That was fun. Because I was like... I swear I recognised this logo from somewhere, and I realised it was from, I think it was when I was watching you do the Spyro stream. Mm. Uh, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to find it, because I've liked about a billion TikToks in between, but yeah, <laughs> that was weird. Oh man, I remember this bit with the statue quite, not fondly, but <laughs> I just remember it. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, the statue's fun. The statue's or, or cool. Or we'll find out. Yeah, it's, it's cool. the way that the frame is cut, so it's like half of his face, and he's just like, <laughs> as like the statue, just it's so strange. I mean, we're not going to give away too much because, of course, we're going to talk about this later. But I do want to say, first of all, that Voldemort's face throughout this fight is just, it's on another level. It's on a new scale, man. <laughs> it's great. Oh, man. Right, we'll give it. Yeah, go on. We'll give it another like two or three minutes and then we'll start. Plus, you go guys on. get to see the whole of this level because, let's be honest, it's not a very long level. <laughs> I like how we're starting with the end of the game. I well, think when this video finishes, we just leave. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I was sort of sitting down going, with every single one of the other games, I've had a level that I could show at the beginning that we're not talking about. But then I'm like, but this game, we're literally reviewing the whole bloody game. What do I yeah. do? <laughs> so I was like, let's just put one that's semi-epic on the screen. And well, that's this. So there you go. Yep. Epic level. Oh, yeah, there's his face again. His face. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, man. What's this? The levels make me think this is more a test. 
<laughs> off the engine. <laughs> the whole game was actually just one big <laughs> test. Rather than the actual game. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, it might as well be a giant test. <laughs> Testing my patience. <laughs> Tests a lot of things, to be honest, this game. But yeah, I mean, this cutscene might as well just be a placeholder. That's basically what it is. It's just a placeholder. <laughs> How have we come so far in the wrong direction is all I have I to say. I did not care for these cutscenes. Well, no, no. Like, we're not going to really review that, I don't think, so I'll just say now. <laughs> Couldn't give less of a shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that you... was, okay, that was my one swear. Nah, I'll, I'll say this. You're allowed to swear on the odd occasion. Um, okay. Just don't... All right, let's put it this way. Swear on the odd occasion, but don't say anything too extreme. Okay, shit that is seems reasonable. reasonable. Yeah. If you go to the higher end of the spectrum, then we get into serious problems. <laughs> oh my god, we've actually made it to the end, have we? Yeah, we have. <laughs> we finished. Love Good. it. Oh, where God? Where is it? Where's that face? Where's that beautiful face? I think everyone needs to see. There it is. Everyone needs to see that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, the cutscenes were just like. <laughs> Technically, they looked okay. I just felt absolutely nothing for them. Like, technically, they look okay. As um, in, like the pictures are, you know, they're a bit stylized and whatever. But they're just boring. Like, not doesn't pique my interest. Doesn't doesn't fill my mind with imagination. Boring. Yeah, I kind of agree. To be fair, and by the way, everyone, what you are seeing here is. It's kind of like the peak of the modelling in this game. <laughs> this is this is what you expect to see when playing this game from the model's facial expressions, and boy, is it beautiful. Uh, right, so I think we've probably waited long enough now. Cool, so uh, let's start this off with a couple of things. So at the end of the stream, we have some special announcements, or showcases in my case. One from myself and one from Phil. So stick around to the end to see right. that cool, funky stuff. <laughs> We're not revealing it now. You have to wait. Uh, yeah, and I guess with that being said... Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different with this stream... Compared to what we've done with the previous three streams. By the way, if you wanted to watch any of the previous streams... Then down in the description of the live stream... You can find a link to every single one of them there. Likewise, if you want to check out Phil's stuff and his channel... Also his review on this game... Then that is also linked down in the description as well. Wow. Yeah, everything's here. Everything. <laughs> So, with Goblet of Fire, as it's not the same as the previous games where you don't actually have spell challenges, of course, we are instead going to be rating this in a very different way, which is we're rating it for all the levels in the game. Uh, all the criteria for what we're rating it against, again, by the way, can be found down in the description of the live stream. So if you want to see anything regarding that and also regarding the levels that we are covering in the game, it's all in that description. So everything is there. So if you ever want to, while we're talking about a level, basically compare your thoughts of that level with those points, then feel free to do so by checking that out. We want to see what you guys think about this game. It's a big deal to us to see what people actually feel for this game because, well, for the most part, a lot of people don't feel a lot for it. But it would be interesting to see what people can do to break it down a bit more. Because you always get a lot of the, I hate this, or this is awful, or this level's crap, or whatever. But this time, you guys actually have the chance to really break it down. So you can really break down each level by each point and really give a proper score for it. So we're interested to see what you guys come up with. So do get involved. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, finally, just to add the last bit here, we do have a bonus part in this stream as well, like some of the previous streams. And this one will be just myself covering this, unless Phil has anything he wants to say, which is unlikely. Which is, I'm also including the mini-games from the PSP version of Goblet of Fire in this bit as well. So I will be talking about that and rating those. Bear in mind that 
it's going to be slightly different to the rating system we have at the top just because well <laughs> it's not quite full levels like the rest of the game it's very much tiny little mini games i.e the name mini games uh, but that'll be me so that's just going to be a quick bit at the end but of course if you guys have played those then you're more than welcome to get involved with that as well so yeah anyway uh while i quickly set up the poll for the first bit i'll let phil talk about something special with you guys Say what you want, Phil. Oh, goodness. Yeah, you're on the I spot. Just <laughs> I just realized that I don't... I can't really remember much of the music in this game, so I was just trying to find that. Uh-oh. And, <laughs> and I found a playlist, but it's literally... It's all in random order, which doesn't help. Nice. Lucky you. Um, <laughs> you came well prepared all. already. Yeah. Good so. uh... Because I was going to go back and re-listen to it, and then I realised I didn't. Right. Okay. Right. I, I mean, I vaguely remember from when I was playing it about it being like, I think. I can't remember. Did it have? Yeah, that one rings a bell. Oops. Sorry, I'm just. It's okay. alright. What's this one? To be honest, it's probably I've probably easier if I just yeah find the old. This was still this was still completely Jeremy Soul or was it someone else as well? It this is just, Jeremy Soul. This, this one. Jeremy Soul, this right? is the yeah. last time where he did a exclusive track for the Harry Potter games. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oops. Not da, 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 da. Don't want AMD. <laughs> not needing the graphics card inside the poll. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Course, what a game. I'm just I'm looking watching some footage and Actually, yeah. wow, what a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh yes, I remember yes, the main theme, because I remember having to watch the stupid cutscene of the, the goblet like getting closer and closer every time. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, right. Uh we really? have got the Ask a community the poll wow. should now be up so you guys can go and vote for the first one so uh just to make this clear for everyone the first bit we're going to be covering is the tutorial stuff so the tutorials in this case are the quidditch world cup defense gets the dark arts lessons uh we're combining them together as they effectively all serve the same purpose which is teaching the player a kind of i guess how to play the game <laughs> so uh yeah, we're going to be covering those to start with. And of course, the Defense Gets the Dark Art stuff is split into two parts because there are two lessons for some reason. But anyway, uh, so that's what we're starting off with. And as Phil is the guest of the stream, Phil, you're oh, going wow. first, my friend. Cool. Off so you go. We Okay, to start off with, I will just say that for a lot of it, actually, this is not really relevant to this one. But um, yeah. So I haven't I haven't gone through the game 100%ing everything. Um, so I won't have found everything. So correct me if I'm wrong in terms of you know any secrets or whatever. Hmm. Um, but yes. So the tutorials. So the Quidditch World Cup bit is it's strange that they put that first and then have the tutorials, even though you've essentially picked up everything in the stupid Quidditch World Cup bit before. It's a bit strange, but um, yeah, so in terms of it being useful, the Quidditch World Cup scene essentially teaches you how to cast spells before the tutorial. So that's useful, and the actual, like, lesson bits are kind of less useful. Um, I mean, I think it makes sense that they would have started at the Quidditch World Cup, because um, you need to actually get the plot into the game somehow. Um, I would say it doesn't do a great job of teaching you how to play it's got like all the opportunities to use combat and teamwork and all that kind of thing. But the like, info kind of just appears on the screen and like, relies on you to be able to pick it up um, rather than it actually being taught to you, which is then what happens in the lessons. But then you've already kind of picked it up. It's a bit, it's a bit strange. I'm not really sure why they did that. Although then you get to learn about salamanders in the second lesson. So that's good and that's useful. Um, I don't remember it being very challenging or too much threat. 
it's because I mean because it's like the first levels in the game, especially not the lessons. Um, it's yeah, I feel like it's more, especially the Quidditch World Cup, just a level to lead us into the story and teach the the very basics. Um, although I have to say that putting out salamanders, I did find quite challenging in a way because I think because I found it quite hard to aim. I ended up just killing the salamander before putting out the fire, which meant another one just spawned. So it's kind of just like an endless cycle of them spawning until I actually managed to put out the fire. Um, I think, are they fun? The first level is like, kind of, it's exciting and, you know, it's, I would say it's pretty linear though. So it's, it's fun. I wouldn't say it was like crazy exciting though, but, um, you know, it's, it's nice to actually be put into the plot. The classroom itself is a bit air, but again, there's a lot of items around the classroom, which is kind of nice to like get all the beans from, which is, you know, at least mildly entertaining. Um, but really, yeah, the first lesson is completely pointless, I think. Um, and I really like how the first level looks in terms of it being quite dark. Um, but then you've got the fire in the background and then it kind of highlights all of the spells. Um, and I think there's a lot happening, but it obviously works very well because of the chaotic nature of the Death Eaters attacking the Quidditch World Cup. Um, yeah, and it's dark and moody, which you know suits the story. And then the the actual like lessons, I think, look okay. Like the classroom looks like the classroom looks pretty faithful to the film. Um, and then the music in the first section, I remember being kind of like. A bit um i guess chaotic and like upbeat i can't really remember about the lessons to be honest i can't imagine there was much music but there's all of the sounds when you're constantly like getting all the items uh all the beans from the items um yeah so i'd say like i'd say they're okay <laughs> yeah cool i guess you got all your points across then for the tutorial stuff <laughs> Sounding really positive there, Phil. <laughs> so uh, just for a comment here from the chat, so do either myself or Phil look at the chat and see what's going on? Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do look at the chat, I promise. Um, usually what we do is we kind of take it in turns to look at the chat. So basically while Phil, for example, is talking and so on, I will be looking at the chat and keeping an eye on what you guys say. Likewise, if I'm talking, then... Phil will also keep an eye on the chat and see what you guys are saying as well. We do also try to bring up important points from the chat as well. And of course, when we both give all of our like say on a particular level or whatever, then yeah, you know, we'll <laughs> literally concentrate on the chat. So yeah, just to point that out, we do check the chat. I promise we do. <laughs> it's not like we ignore your existence. I promise we do recognize you're there. Anyway, um, cool. So... As Phil has done all of that, I'm going to get my points across for this stuff quickly. And uh, yeah, well, we'll go on with that. I'm going to quickly switch over to the other sections as we haven't seen that yet. So you guys get to see a bit of this bit too. Cool. Okay, so the tutorial levels then. How useful are these levels overall? In my opinion, not that useful. <laughs> so I guess the one thing I can safely say about these tutorials, I really, it feels weird to call them tutorials because they're just not much of a tutorial, but they do, I suppose, at least give you an idea of how the game will be played. They do give you an idea of how the teamwork mechanic works in this game, because of course this is the first game where teamwork is a big deal, like a major deal. Um, you could argue that, of course, like the PS2 Prisoner of Azkaban has teamwork, which it does, but this really takes the teamwork to a whole new level. And that's because, of course, this game has the option of co-op, where you can play with another real person too, not just on your own all the time or with AI. Um, but yes, so it does teach you how the co-op mechanics work, which is really good. It also teaches you a little bit about the different enemies that you're going to, of course, see throughout the game. Um, 
while it doesn't teach you exactly how to kill them a lot of the time, it does at least give you some vague idea of what you're going to need to do to take them out. <laughs> but I think that's mainly the most that you get from these tutorials. You don't really get a lot else that's useful to you. Because you see things like picking up beans, they don't really teach you anything about that. You just cast at things and pick them up <laughs> and you obviously mm. get the amazing quote right from ron about beans all the time which is probably the dibs way of trying to say pick up the beans <laughs> but <laughs> me, yeah. yeah i mean it's not actually explained to the player why they're picking up the beans or anything and the player does have to figure it out themselves kind of later on in the game um, which there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not against that sort of thing, but I mean, it does help to explain things like, for example, there's uh, the beans are used to unlock those cards, right, in the main menu to upgrade your characters and things later on in the game. That's never explained. You just have to figure that out. I'll give props to the devs for at least explaining that red beans give you health. That's really helpful. And I also give them props for explaining that the blue beans fill up your Magicus Extremis meter, which is like the ultra powerful mode, uh, which again is not very well explained, but briefly explained. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess they're semi-useful. Not that useful though. They get their point across in the most basic way is what I'm really trying to refer to. Uh, how fun are the levels? <laughs> This is an interesting point for me, and I think Phil already knows where this is going. Because, <laughs> to be honest, none of them are fun. Um, <laughs> at all. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you... I've never done this, but if you play it with a real-life human being as your co-op friend, they probably are somewhat fun. But my only experience of playing this game is with AI... And everyone knows that I despise the AI in this game with an absolute passion. If you've ever seen my stream of this, I was swearing at them constantly when they weren't doing things right. So, yeah, I do hate them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't find the tutorials particularly that fun. Uh, they're especially, like, the uh, beginning one with the, like, Try a Tournament bit. Uh, not Try a Tournament, sorry, the Quidditch World Cup even bit. It's just sort of something that I play and go, I want to get through this as quickly as possible. Let's just get it out of the way. Which is not a great sign for your first level of your game, I might add. That's a very bad thing to have. <laughs> but yeah, so not that fun for me. Uh, how difficult are the tutorials? To be honest with you, if you're an experienced player, not that difficult. If you're someone that's literally a beginner to games and has no idea how games are played... Probably very difficult, which is why most people did not play very far through Goblet of Fire. Especially when the devs decided it would be a good idea for a lot of the things to put, like, press any key in order to do something. I mean, I get what they're trying to refer to here, but that's not a good idea to put that for beginner people, because they'll have no idea what that is. A lot of beginner people will probably look at that and go, where's the any key on the keyboard or on the controller? And be like, well, it's there's not an actual key that's specified as that. It's just any key you want to press. But they didn't put that, of course. <laughs> so I think beginner people will struggle a little bit with this. But also, in regards to like the AI mechanics and stuff too, I feel like beginners are going to have a tough time because the AI, in the nicest possible way, is absolute crap. <laughs> it's yeah. so bad <laughs> this is AI that just doesn't work half the time so people will think that they're doing something wrong when in reality they're not it's entirely the AI inside the game's fault so yeah again makes it a bit of a challenge at points uh, other than that though not that difficult but again I've played this enough to make it so it probably isn't that difficult but I feel like beginners would struggle a bit uh, secrets, there aren't any, of course, in these tutorials, unless you count frogs, but pff, I'm not counting that. Uh, <laughs> visuals, I will admit that if there's one thing that this game does right, and you're going to hear me praise a lot throughout this, it is the visuals. The visuals, in my opinion, are very good in this. Not so much the models of the characters, but the actual levels. They did a really good job, in my opinion, of actually like getting the dark atmosphere of Goblet of Fire in this game. Because, of course, Goblet of Fire 
is not exactly a happy <laughs> film or a happy book in some cases, although it's based off the film, of course. Um, so yeah, they did a good job of that. And there's a lot of dark colours in these levels, which is nice. And actually, in the case of the beginning bit with the Quidditch World Cup, I like the fact that they have some actual light bits of colour in there as well with like the fire and things that make it stand out as well. So you've got a good mix of light and dark there with that level. It's good. Uh, so yeah, the visuals I think are top notch actually to be fair in these levels. The audio. Now the audio for the first tutorial level with the Quidditch bit is from my memory quite... It's somewhat fast paced but it doesn't change a lot. It's one of those things that sort of does its purpose, which is, you know, you hear it in the level, it suits the level just fine, but it's not a piece of music that I'm going to remember fondly and want to go back and listen to. So it serves its purpose, but that's about it. As for these specific levels where Defense Against the Dark Arts... Again, most of the music I can remember of these, and I have actually, to be fair, forgotten a fair bit of what's inside of these levels, more on the outside of them when you're outside walking around the exterior. Um, yeah, the exterior stuff is quite nice. It's quite sort of like moody and gloomy kind of music. Uh, the inside stuff, from what I can remember, is pretty basic. There's like a tiny bit here, but nothing special. Uh, and then lastly, the spells, which I know Phil didn't cover here, but I'm going to cover it here. And we're actually, ironically enough, right up next to where we're about to get it after Ron stops getting beans. <laughs> which is uh, the Aqua Rapto spellbook. So, obviously in this game, you don't do challenges to get spells. And you only learn two new spells throughout the whole game. Like, actually pick up a book to learn them. And um, this is one of them. So, Aqua Rapto. It's nothing particularly special when you pick it up, of course. You get a, like a mini cut scene of all the characters looking really happy, but that's about it. Um, but Aqua Rupto itself as a spell looks really nice. It has a really nice water effect to the spell. What I like about Aqua Rupto as well is that depending on sort of the frequency of the amount of water that the character is putting on a salamander or a fire or whatever it changes via like the size of the amount of water coming out of the spell. And of course, if you have all three characters at once putting out a fire, uh, then if it's a big fire, you get tons of water and a big radius of it coming out. And it just looks really nice. So yeah, I have to give them credit. The Aqua Rapto spell looks great and it functions well. It's also useful in pretty much all levels. So they did a good job with that one, actually. They did a good job. So yeah. That's what I have to say when it comes to tutorials. There you are. <laughs> Very comprehensive. Yeah, I mean, the first one, I thought there would be a lot to talk about, to be fair. Yeah. Especially be fair, it's like it, it covers a lot of stuff that it is like in the rest of the game as well, so it makes it, sense. It does. It's got like the mechanics and stuff too, so yeah. I knew that one would be a bit lengthy. <laughs> uh, I, I corrupt those quite nice looking though, actually, yeah. Mm. The one thing they, they got right in this game. <laughs> what acro we're up to? <laughs> well, the how it looks. <laughs> how it looks, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. It blocked a comment saying, "Oh yeah, the AI are dumbasses." I agree. I am showing that comment. YouTube, Allow that comment. YouTube, you are not blocking that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much of the chat you uh, saw while I was going through my in-depth stuff. <laughs> I have been reading it. What um, kind of stuff have we got then? Not a lot. I mean, there's not really a lot in this levels, to be fair, and to, like specifically. But mm. um, John likes Quidditch World Cup audio at the beginning. Um, mm. Beginners will definitely struggle. Mm -hmm. The AI being bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, wait, what? Save the drivers, the levels, and Voldemort. They're all solo for very obvious reasons. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> HP4 is the worst. I mean, it's not, but <laughs> I understand why you say it. Uh, yeah. Some redeeming qualities, that's fair enough. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I agree with what a lot of people have said there. 
That's interesting. Oh, what's this Aqua up to? Is the wimpy version? Oh, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I I see what you mean. Yeah, but obviously that's not in specifically HB4, so I have to talk about Aqua up to. Look, we've got to praise the game somehow <laughs> or else it's just going to be negativity. <laughs> anyway, I want to see what the poll came out with. So, uh, people said so far 31% said the tutorials they're all great and helpful interesting uh, middle ground so 46% said alright but nothing special which is probably where I would go to be honest Yeah. and 25% said awful uh, sorry 23% even said awful which yeah I mean I again spent, yeah. I, I actually that is the first time we've had such a spread out here yeah. in any of these polls ever <laughs> that's that's the first time we've seen that so there you go that's kind of groundbreaking but i do kind of have to admit that i myself if i was in this poll would put myself probably sort of in the between awful and middle but more down in the awful department that's just my view i don't know where you would exactly put yourself phil well, we'll find out if we give scores Exactly. Well, <laughs> all right, let's give our scores cool. then. So as you went first, you're the one to yep. go first. I'm going to give it a... I'm between two numbers. Ooh. Um. Hmm. I'll give it a three. Yeah. A three? Yeah. God. That's high. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Everyone's probably thinking as soon as I said, God, he's like, he's going to give it something higher. It's like, nope. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a two. While yeah. it does at least have some kind of use to it, the tutorial levels, it's not a good use in a lot of cases because <laughs> there's no, a lot of problems. It's not a good tutorial level. No, there's like, a lot of problems not, with it. It, a lot. it doesn't really like... It doesn't serve its purpose, really. It's like, <laughs> I mean, just about. Just about. Just yeah. about. Um, but it, it's not great. So yeah, I mean, I think two is a fair score, and I guess three is reasonable. I think that's too high, personally. But <laughs> <laughs> that's still fair look nice. They, yeah, yeah, I suppose. Uh, so before we move on to the next levels, just ask people in the chat right now. Um, if you guys give a score, just a general score, so out of 10, that would be awesome as well. So we'll just give you a couple of minutes or so to give your scores. Otherwise, I guess uh, we can chat about some other crazy things and I'll get the next poll ready as well for the next level. So, uh, yeah, what do you want to talk about, Phil? <laughs> I'm trying to think of games with good and bad tutorials. The fifth game was okay. Uh, yeah, to be fair, actually, like, that was really uh, good in the house mm. randomly doing spells and that it, i think it did it pretty well um, yeah i think it, it needed game, to second game probably does the best the mm -hmm. whole section before you get to hogwarts um <clears throat> <coughs> yeah i mean the fifth one to be fair had to be a good tutorial because they changed up the controls massively for motion yeah. controls and stuff so, yeah. If that wasn't good, that would have been serious. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, in this one, they kind of just leave you to it, almost, like, and then put up some words on the screen every now and then, and it's like, okay. Hmm. Uh, um, what did, I'm trying to remember what the... Oh, yeah, the third games was in the train. That was okay. Mm -hmm. The first game... The first game didn't really do the tutorial in the same way, right? Uh, we're talking about the PC ones, obviously, because you just get dropped in Hogwarts, and then I mm. guess in that case, then you only learn what you need as you go along, which is good. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas the second one, you have the whole section at the beginning. Yes. I think both work quite well. Yes. Um, oh, wait, the first game, you actually have most of Fred and George doing most of the tutorial, actually. Yeah, that section works quite well. Whereas this one, it feels like they tried to put it in the first level, but then... Failed. Yeah, and then, like, did it again. It's almost like they planned 
they planned to use the lessons as a tutorial, but then realized they couldn't start the game there because then it would just be like you just miss all of the plot points. So then had to like shove the first level in, but then had to like just do what you do in a tutorial then anyway because there's nothing else to do because it's the first level. Mm. It's strange. I honestly feel like with Goblet of Fire, they probably originally planned to have a tutorial that was meant to be for co-op people that played, you know, with actual real people. Yeah. And then one that was just with AI, but then eventually they were like, uh, they do sort of do the same thing and we need to get as much as possible, but we can't put certain creatures or whatever in the you know, beginning area, so we need the Hogwarts for that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a messy tutorial. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, it's all, uh, all over the place. It is, yeah. So I'm just having a look at the scores for the tutorial stuff quickly. Just want to see what people have said. So low. Uh, a three from John Chipper two. Now that's what I like to see some twos. Um, <laughs> uh, Roberto said a three out of ten. A bit bland. I think that's putting it nicely. <laughs> but I like the look of the classroom. Yeah. And that we already have a big uh, roaster of spells. Yeah, I suppose, at the beginning of the game. I mean, yeah, I didn't. to be fair, I didn't mention that in the thing. But even though you do have a lot of spells at the beginning of the game, once again, they don't feel particularly that special. And they also don't teach you how to use most of them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i guess it, it's cool but it's kind of pointless <laughs> at the same time i don't know it's just it's just the way i feel about this game <laughs> uh phil likes hb5 because of umbridge it's so true it's yes the only, the only, no. it's, it is a reason <laughs> i thought you might like it so much because of the bridge crashing issue i thought that'd be the number one reason <laughs> No, unfortunately. But getting getting past that was a good enough reason to play. <laughs> I can't, yeah, anyway. Fair enough. Okay, right. I think we've got enough scores when it comes to what we needed there for the tutorial levels. And I have put up the new poll, by the way, for everyone, for the next level, which is almost feels like the level we were just looking at. But anyway, Hogwarts Exterior. Yeah. So this is the next level we're going to be reviewing. I'll be doing this one first and Phil will be keeping an eye on what you guys say in the chat. Um, and then, of course, when I'm done, if there's points to catch up on inside the chat, then, of course, you know, Phil will, I'm sure, point it out. Uh, will. And then Phil will be the next one to review this lovely level. By the way, I probably should point out that the gameplay that you are seeing in the background, we're not going to be showing any of the gameplay where... Uh, we're going back through the levels multiple times here. This will just be when you play it the first time, and that's that. But we will talk about going back through the levels multiple times, just so you're aware. Okay, so Hogwarts Exterior. This is what I consider the first actual level of the game, in my personal opinion. That's just how I look at it. Um, how useful is this level? Not really. <laughs> I can't say that this level has much use at all actually it's not like it's a level that teaches you a new spell like aqua raptor or anything in fact the only thing that i can even say that this level might be useful for is teaching you how to deal with the urklings which are these little creatures that you see or just saw there briefly on the screen that blow darts at the player and yeah, it, it somewhat teaches you how to defeat them. When I say somewhat, it basically just sort of says on the screen, attack it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it gets the point across, I suppose. <laughs> um, that's about the only use of this level. I, I guess, again, it's kind of left up to the player, though. It's not really fully explained to the player. This is the first level that actually showcases, well, other than the tutorial, this is the first one that showcases the mini Triwizard Shields, not the big ones. The big ones are actually shown in the end of the tutorial level, but the mini ones are shown in this. But again, while you pick up the mini ones, it's never really communicated to the player why you're picking up the mini ones. Of course, there is a proper purpose to it, and the purpose is you pick up 10 of the mini shields and it creates a big shield for the player.
but of course this is never really explained so yeah <laughs> i guess it somewhat shows what the mini shields look like throughout the level by making them quite obvious to find but that's about all it does uh, and then, of course, you have the big shields in this level as well that you can pick up and uh, they're important for some actual reason that I'm still not quite fully 100% sure why you collect them in this game. But yeah, whatever. <laughs> they're like collectibles. But yeah, it gets the point across, I suppose. While we're on this point as well, I do want to mention that going back through this level multiple times... Uh, this is where we're going to be talking about this with other levels as well and how annoying it is but basically when you replay the level or levels as we're talking about the other ones there you pick up a try with the shield a big one and when you pick it up it quits the player back to the main menu so then you have to reload the entire level again and play through the entire level again in order to go and find another big shield. This is possibly the worst design mechanic <laughs> of this game. <laughs> it yeah. sucks. It is called backtracking, but on a crap scale. And actually, this is the first time I will safely say that I actually praise the Deathly Hallows Part 1. Even though it's backtracking is crap, it at least makes it so you don't have to go to the main freaking menu all the time. <laughs> and it's so annoying to go and pick up a big shield and know that you can't just immediately go and pick up another big shield in your same playthrough there. And what's even more insulting is when you have two big shields right next to one another. Oh, They're literally yeah. sitting there staring at you in the face going, pick me up. And you have to make the hard decision of which one do I pick up. And the worst part is, if it involves getting the AI to help you to get those big shields, you feel even more crap. Because <laughs> it takes forever to get the AI to actually cooperate to get some of these shields. Picking up blocks, for example, to move them into certain places. It's horrendous if the AI stands on one or just doesn't cooperate by picking one up or decides to pick one up and then let go all the time. It drives you nuts. So yeah, the AI is crap and it makes it even harder to get these shields. But this is a terrible mechanic and whoever designed this obviously wanted to do this for one reason and one reason only and that is to justify the price tag of the game being a really expensive game at the time. <laughs> It's a sort of justify its length. But it's not a good justification, really. But whatever. So there you go. There's that. Uh, how fun is this level? Okay, I will admit, I don't know. I still can't pinpoint it for myself. But I do actually quite enjoy this level. I really don't know what it is, though, that makes me enjoy it. I think it might be the mood and atmosphere of the level, like the general look of it and feel. But also probably the music as well, which I'll get onto in a little bit. But yeah, in some ways I do actually quite like this level. It's one of the few levels, in fact, like pretty much really the only level for the most part in this game that I actually really enjoy quite a bit. So yeah, I like this level. <laughs> um, the difficulty of this level, is it difficult? Again, not really in my opinion. The only time it becomes difficult is when you have to get the AI to cooperate with you in order to be able to obtain some of the tribes of shields, which is literally hell so yeah that can be horrendous um other than that not really i suppose the only other thing you could say is a bit difficult is the new enemy type in the level the irk things which can be quite challenging i'm sure for beginner players personally they're just annoying to me but they're nothing particularly like horrendous um so yeah i guess they're all right um the visuals of this level okay I love this level's visuals. I really do. The one thing I've always wanted to see is a much more grim looking Hogwarts in a sort of nighttime feel with a stormy, rainy atmosphere. And this level executes that perfectly, in my opinion. Actually, looks really nice. And it pisses me off that we can't free roam explore the whole of Hogwarts like this in this game. But for what we get here, it looks good. And I love it. So, yes. 100% love the visuals. Great stuff here. Really executed well on this level. Uh, the audio. Now, the audio is something intriguing in this level because there are points in the level where there is 
absolutely no music whatsoever, but rather just the irk things, sort of creepy voices at points, oh, yeah. which I like, by the way. I like the build-up of sort of an enemy that you can't see, that you don't know about, and it's quite a creepy enemy, and it builds it up perfectly. And then, of course, as soon as you see the enemy, the intense music kicks in, and that's... I like that. A good build-up and atmosphere as well. So good stuff there. Also, if you go to the secret sort of part of the level, there's like a secret area, effectively... Uh, you get some really nice calming music that plays, which, again, actually is quite nice for this level. Does it suit the actual level's atmosphere and things? Not particularly, but it's a nice piece of music. So, to be honest, I give it credit for that. Um, so, yeah, I think the audio is very good in this level, actually. And especially with the Erklings. I like the Erklings audio in this. Good stuff. Uh, the spells, of course, again, it's the same thing as before where, you know, the spells are what they are. And I guess the nice thing is that this level does make use of Aqua Erupto that you've just learned a reasonable amount more for the sort of free roam exploring and collecting the shields than the actual main part of the level. But still, I'm glad that it makes the use of it. And, uh, yeah, well, I think, to be honest with you, the only other thing I can really add here is the secrets, which are... Uh, from my memory, the Mad Eye Moody eyeballs and the dragon statues. Oh, and there's also the vanishing card as well, of course, which is just like a card that basically you have to collect in a time limit or else it disappears, i.e. the name. Um, <laughs> yeah, the collectibles, I mean, they're nothing particularly groundbreaking or anything that makes me go, oh, look at that awesome design. <laughs> but they are at least there. I'm glad that they did put collectibles in this game because otherwise it would be very boring. But do they have a lot of purpose? Not particularly. And my big, big issue with the collectibles in this game is once again, it's like a criminal offence of this game. They don't explain why you are collecting them. There is actually a purpose for collecting them and that is to unlock specific upgrades for the levels for certain characters and so on uh, that you can get via the cards basically menu bit but again this isn't explained so most people just be collecting these collectibles and going why am i doing this <laughs> and there's no actual reason behind it so yeah that's my problem with it really we'll go back to the beginning again there um but the collectibles are there so cool anyway yeah i think that is pretty much everything i have to say for hogwarts exterior wow a lot of thoughts, a lot of thoughts. So, did anyone say anything groundbreaking in the chat? <laughs> um, not really, I wouldn't say groundbreaking, but um, John just feels like you're going back to Defense Against the Dark Arts over and over again. And then obviously I said, back again, eh? Um, <laughs> because, oh, yeah. No. I mean, that's <laughs> one of the... It's like they knew when they were making this game, like, when they wrote that line, they knew that they were taking the piss out of it. They knew that they were, like, they knew what they were doing, forcing you to go back again and again. Um, it's true. But yeah. It is true. I, I, That line is engraved in my brain, rent-free it's, now. It <laughs> captures it perfectly. Um, it does. <laughs> but yeah, John says this level can be fun. It's inexplicable. Um, and I kind of agree. I'll, I'll, I'll go over some of my points. I mean, I agree basically with everything that you say pretty much um like in terms of usefulness yeah you don't learn anything but at least you get to use the spell that you've just learned i suppose which is nice um and i found the erklings to be kind of difficult i think they were difficult like at the beginning especially when there was a lot of them um but the, yeah i they kind of become more annoying in the end um but i thought it was fun the way you can like cast the spell and like make their head into a pumpkin which i thought was great that's like a nice touch um and i remember later on there was some like nice block pushing puzzles and like cauldron smashing puzzles um i guess despite the ai failing to help ever um yeah i mean the whole backtracking thing is annoying but you do get to come back here in the future when you learn one of the future spells which is like it's kind of nice to go back and revisit because as you said, this level looks so nice. Like, especially the bit at the beginning as you're walking along 
with the glowing from inside Hogwarts on like the flying buttresses and you can sort of see down below and it's like rainy and misty. So I I agree that this level looks um it looks really good. Um mm -hmm. I and yeah, it's nice to actually have like a moody outside, dark, rainy level for once. It's a bit strange going back to it because then it's like, oh, the weather is just bad again. <laughs> like it kind of i don't know if it works but i still think it's nice to go back because it does look nice um hmm. and that's pretty much it's pretty much it. everything else you've said is pretty much covers it it's i really i do like i did like playing this level um i think it is literally just because of the mood and like there's nothing like too annoying in it it's like a pretty standard level which is good for like the first proper level I say first proper level, there's basically like four proper levels in this game. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I didn't find coming back to this one again and again to be as annoying as some of the other ones. I think I kind of enjoyed coming back to this one more than I... Um, what's the word? Like more than I would hate going back to it. I can't... I can't work out what to say, but but yeah, that's that's basically my thoughts. I like it, but I'm not really sure why. But it's pretty good, and yeah, you get to use the spells you've you've just learned, which is nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I agree with those points. To be fair, uh, I actually forgot about the Herbificus spell bit. To be fair, in this level, that completely slipped my mind until you just brought that. Up. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember where it is. Like, cause again, I feel like it was kind of hard to find your way around most of these levels to be honest i don't know why there's something about that i just found it quite difficult to navigate hmm. um but yeah it's in one of the secret sort of areas so actually i could show you in the video so right while you're going along like the main walkway bit uh where is it here we are so like the first bit where you move away all those stones you know that are blocking hmm. your path it's literally oh. just down that staircase there where my mouse yeah. is pointing. If you go down yeah. there, there's a secret path, and that's where you use the Hippificus spell to make the lily pads uh, yeah. open up so you can get the shield. Obviously, we'll explain that spell later when you actually get it, but yeah, <laughs> just as a yeah. brief explanation, yeah, that's where it is. Um, so there you go. Uh, cool. So I guess a score. <laughs> now... People are going to be surprised, I think, by this. Because I'm sure people already know how I feel about pretty much everything in this game. But I actually really like this level. This is the one thing in Goblet of Fire that I'm quite happy to go back and play. And to be honest, for the most part, it's the one level that I'm okay having to backtrack through. Compared to all the other levels, this is the one that I really don't mind as much. Um, mainly because it's not quite as heavily reliant on the AI, I think. But yeah, so score for me with this level, I'm actually giving it quite a high one. It's getting a seven. Very interesting. Mm. I I agree with what you say about it relies less on AI, which is true. I distinctly remember the future ones having more annoying AI in them. Um, yeah, and I'm also going to give this one a seven. But I want to add that the scores for this game are relative to this game only. A 7 in this game does not equal a 7 in the Chamber of Secrets game if I gave anything a 7. But <laughs> for the purposes of this, I'm going to give it a 7. Because I enjoyed this level, actually. And this is one of those levels where, when I was thinking back to this game, because when I was remembering playing this game, I don't remember the annoying bits as much as I remember the good bits. And this is definitely one of the bits that I remember being quite good. Mm. Um, so, seven. Yeah, solid seven. <laughs> oh, I love that. The first thing I see immediately when I look at the chat is, whoa, Alex actually likes something in this one. <laughs> uh, I thought someone might point that out. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's surprising, isn't it? I actually like something in this game. It's not the main menu for once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so what else have we got? Uh, so I think I chip games' comment. In terms of gameplay, I'd give it probably a four, but for the art, I would go for eight or nine, as it's very nice. That's kind of how I feel. But if anything, because the gameplay is quite simplistic, it's not too annoying, whereas in some of the other levels, sometimes it's just 
annoying when they try to do stuff and then it just makes it worse. So at least this is like distinctly average gameplay. So at least it is not like too annoying. That's a positive, I think. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's some kind of positive. I'll, I'll look at it that way. <laughs> uh, so John gave it a 7 out of 10 as well. Yes, fair enough. In terms of gameplay, I'd probably give it a 4. Interesting. But for the art, I would go for an 8 or a 9. Yeah. Visuals. Yes, it's the visuals. I mean, a visual. I knew that the visuals would play a big part, I think, for most people when scoring this level. And it does for me, to be fair, as well. Yeah. Because <laughs> they are really good. Like, there's no denying it. The visuals in this level are fantastic. And. I think that the art team should get a pat on the back for actually managing to execute this level so well. <laughs> and mm. so should the audio team, actually, to be fair, for what they did with the audio. I think they did a great job. So, nice one, guys. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's have a look and see as well what we got on the poll. Also, Roberto gave it a 6 out of 10. Like the creepy Irk things, the challenging foes, yeah. I just don't like rain that much. <gasps> you don't like rain? <laughs> That's that unacceptable. Britain, unacceptable. I mean, that is like the Goblet of Fire in a nutshell. That's, yeah. <laughs> rain. It's rain. <laughs> it's just rain. Right. I'm just imagine if, imagining if this level was like plain Hogwarts and like no rain, no darkness. I feel like it would be a lot more boring. Oh, that would be very boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the poll, what have we got here? So 12% said they love it. Interesting. 62% um, said it's all right. That's good. Nice average in the middle there. And then 25% said it sucks. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I can kind of see the spread of the like results there being what it is. I understand that. Um mm. Yeah, I thought people would probably go a bit more in the middle with this one, or potentially high. I really think that this might be the only level where people are going to go in the higher areas. <laughs> yeah. I could be wrong, but that's why I feel like it's going to be. Uh, I agree, but it gets depressing with time. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. And the um, game does like you to spend a lot of time in these levels so i mean to be fair you say it gets depressing over time but the game in itself is depressing <laughs> it actually is like the story of goblet is depressing but the game in general is depressing to play so, <laughs> so there you go <laughs> all right i think that'll do for uh, hogwarts exterior nice it's probably the highest scoring feather we'll see in a while. Okay, let's create another poll. Right, Phil, I'll leave it to you to uh, come God. up with some funky thing to say. This game's so uninspiring in terms of coming up with stuff to say, unlike the previous <laughs> games. Um, well, you could just say, what do you think of Rain? <laughs> <laughs> now, what does everyone think about Rita Skeeter being the picture on the card for friendship? That was honestly... <laughs> who, who decided that? I like, remember that. <laughs> it's either like a really like, it's either they knew what they were doing, or it was a complete accident. Like, I'm kind of hoping someone did that on purpose. Um, it's just like the opposite. Like, it's it's as if like Umbridge was the like the card for, I don't know, for friendship as well. To be honest, like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they did that though with Crumb as well, where they had Crumb's card later on as like a ultra powerful friendship card. And I'm sitting there going, he is like the opposite person in the whole tournament for friendship. <laughs> Literally, the worst person. You could have even put Fleur there; it would have been a better choice. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh, Barbs is here. Hello, Barbs. It's been a very long time since we've last seen you. Welcome back. Unfortunately, to got put a fire, but welcome back. Magicus Extremus. It's literally like they were just ripping off everything that was in the the Return of the King game. <laughs> like they've got the like the like full charge power up thing. You've got co op. Um, 
Although, I guess there wasn't AI in Return of the King if you... Oh. Well, there is, technically um, speaking, AI, because if, playing... if you play the Black Gate level, you've got the, you know, Gimli, Legolas, or whoever you're playing oh, as to yeah, defend. Uh, and I'd like to add that level on hard with, a, <laughs> with those AI. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. It's brutal at points. Level. It is. But it's a fun level. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, right, we're going to have to rape Return of the King now, aren't we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think the contract's been renewed, Phil. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, don't say no. You should be happy about it. <laughs> right, anyway. Yeah. So uh, I put the new poll up for the next level for you guys to go and vote away. Uh, Phil, it's your turn to take the charge on this level. Good luck. Cool. Are we doing <laughs> Forbidden we doing? Forest? Forbidden Forest, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm gonna be honest. I remember not liking this level that much. Um, and I know this is skipping to how the presentation, but I think it's mostly just because of how it looks. Like it's just so. Like that color. It's just green, and that's it. But um, so to start off with, I don't remember liking this one very much anyway. Um, but in terms of usefulness, at least we're moving the plot along, finally, because we've got something to do with the, um, Hungarian horn tail. I can't remember if it had escaped, or they were- I can't remember exactly what it was, but the dragon's in it somewhere. Um, so it's useful in terms of getting the plot going so we can finish this game sooner. Um, I can't remember how difficult the main bit of the level was. I feel like I vaguely remember getting lost and like not really knowing where to go, if that counts as like challenging. Um, uh, and I feel like there was some like puzzly bits and like fights and that that were a bit challenging and a bit of a struggle. Um, again, this is me like trying to access repressed memories <laughs> in the back of my brain, but. Um, <laughs> The boss at the end, which actually I don't think is in this video that you've done, because I've got it here, and I don't remember you ever getting to the blast ended screw, and now I'm not sure how I got to that. Uh, um, it is here, it is in this Oh, one. it is? Yeah. It's not obviously on the screen yet, but it is here. No. Because uh, I've got your, I've got the video up in a separate bit. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, it it's is like there. right at the end. It's right yeah. at the very end, yeah. I was like, did I accidentally <laughs> get to a different part of the level early on? Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, that bit I vaguely remember being like a bit challenging because you can only attack a certain side of it. Um, and I don't remember this level being especially fun. I like the, the booba tuba things. Um, even if they're a bit like difficult to control, at least they were kind of interesting. Um, sometimes I think it probably took too much time if you're trying to like clear the path ahead of, I think it was the mushrooms. Yeah, like, yeah, the sort of poisonous mushrooms. But at least it was like something a bit different, which is nice. Um, and yeah, presentation wise, eh, don't really care about it that much. Even though I like plants, this is not the kind of plants that I want. I want the like, the nice house plants that millennials have. I don't want this. I like <laughs> forest. I don't like this forest. It's too green. I need like, I need like a forest like in. <laughs> The Lord of the Rings. You got a bit more brown, a bit more grey as well as the green, whereas this is just green. Although there's the few bits when you're like near the not really the castle, like the sort of old burning down um I guess like an old church kind of vibe, that bit. That bit looks alright, but besides that, it's just such it's just very one note to me. Um I don't fully remember what the music was like, but I feel like I remember it not there not being a lot, or at least it being very just like incidental, you know, like not really exciting. It's more just like there. Well, I'm not. I don't quote me on that. I'm sure you'll you'll probably know better. But yeah, I just I didn't like this one that much. I think because it's a bit too big and open, and not like the previous level, which I found a bit more because well, that was like although it felt a bit linear going back to it. You've obviously got all these set paths and things to find, whereas this is just like one big forest that all looks the same, and I can't be dealing with that. So <laughs> that's how I feel. I uh, I think you definitely made some very intriguing points in that. 
Uh, I could have I could have lied about some of it because I can't fully remember, but that's from what I remember anyway. I did enjoy the bit where you said it's too green. <laughs> it is too green. It's sorry. <laughs> carry on. <laughs> okay, so I just want to quickly say before I give my points here that I like what Phil has said in a lot of aspects of this level, but I also want to say to the chat that I see a lot of you don't mind this level. And that's fine. You, of course, you know, it's your opinion. Good, good. But I bet you that most of you have not tried to go back through this level and 100% it. I bet you you haven't. But it's okay. Bob's, we'll Bob's hates it as well, so it's fine. That's fine. That's good to hear. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, okay, my points on uh, the Forbidden Forest. Just to make this plain and clear, this is one of my most hated levels in the entire game. So I'm not going to have a lot of positivity for it. Just to make that clear. Okay, right. So, useful side. I agree with Phil. It's nice to finally have some plot again. <laughs> There's one thing that Goblet of Fire does really badly. It's following the plot of what it's supposed to be following. And it's ironic that, because this is meant to be the first game where they based it entirely off of the film, so they were designing it in a way that anyone who hadn't watched the film yet could just play this game and they would know exactly what the whole plot is, but I'd argue and say that, to be honest, it's confusing as hell. So, if you hadn't seen the film, you would have no idea what's going on, really. Um, but yeah, it's nice to see that there is at least some plot here, although I do question at the beginning of this when Hagrid takes Harry, Ron and Hermione to the forest, like, where does he go? Does he pop off to the pub to, like, have a beer with some old mates or something? Like, he's gone to get another dragon's egg or something stupid. Probably. He's yeah. probably gone to the pub to have a beer with some old mates like he does in uh, VS1 versions. <laughs> I mean, seriously, where does he go? He's, like, in a still cut scene. That's the best we get of Hagrid, by the way, at this game. I'd just like to point that out. Uh, it's, it's just a flat image, a nice JPEG. And he's there for, like, probably a second on the screen. And then he's gone. And he just dumps these kids in the forest for absolutely no reason whatsoever. They're adults now, it's fine. <laughs> well, more importantly, <laughs> is like when he leaves them behind and you load up the beginning of this level, I would say anyone that doesn't know the plot of the like main film and that would be confused as hell. Like, why do they just, you know, randomly appear in the middle of the forest standing there just... Why? <laughs> There's no explanation for this. They're just there. Like, what's going on? <laughs> it's stupid in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, yeah that, that's my point with the plot. Otherwise, the rest of the level, I guess it's useful for teaching you what a horntail dragon looks like. That is pretty much about it. It, at a very basic level, teaches you what those pus-filled plant little and this is the one time i am going to swear shits are all about because i hate those things i don't feel you said you like them i hate those stupid things i, I think i find them interesting more than actually like them <laughs> fair know. enough fair enough i hate them so much whenever i see one of those i have like a mini anxiety attack uh, especially when it comes to trying to get all the shields in this level Oh, man. I have sworn no, at those yeah. things far too many times. Um, whoever created, by the way, and if you are a dev listening to this, then I would like to know the answer to this. Please tell me the answer to this. Whoever created the indicator for telling you where you are shooting those pus-filled blobs, why does the indicator only appear... If you get so far back from it, and by the time you do that, <laughs> when it, the indicator is showing you where you want it to be, you try and go back further into that blob pus filled thing, and then the indicator disappears. So then, how do I know where this stupid thing is going to land? Who designed that indicator? Because you did a very bad job. <laughs> Just to put it bluntly, you did a bad job. Sorry, it's a terrible indicator, and it really annoys me thoroughly. And they did it. They did it just for you. They did it like that. Literally. Like it. Also, why did you color it blue? Dark blue, <laughs> especially in a level like this, which has dark 
green and black in it. <laughs> and it makes it hard to see the indicator. Why did you do this? <laughs> this is a terrible idea. Colour coordination did not work here with this level. Uh, so yeah, you'll already hear my visual point of view later on. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's that's the case of the useful side. Fun. I hate this level. It's not fun. It's boring as hell. Done. Right? <laughs> Is the level difficult? Um, in the case of doing the main quest, no. In the case of getting the extra shields and that, God, yes. It is horrendous. <laughs> and it is all to do with the AI and the pus filled blob things. What are they called again? The blobitubers. Boobitubers, yeah. Those things. Because <laughs> they are horrible to try and line up on things sometimes. And the worst thing, actually, coming back to those little sods again, is it the camera when you're going back through to the beginning of the level again, which you came from when you played through it the first time. If the camera is facing the wrong direction and you've got to push, like, a pull one of those things and fling it at the mushrooms and you can't see because the bloody camera doesn't point in the right direction to show you what you're trying to shoot at, you know you've done something wrong with your designing of the camera. <laughs> this is a serious problem. And it's just annoying. You spend forever at that point trying to shoot those things at those mushrooms and you think you've got it. And then the camera finally flings with that thing and you go, great, I missed. <laughs> it sucks. And any speedrunner that's doing 100% on this game, I feel for you, man. I feel for you. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, it's bad. It, it's bad. Um, secrets of this level, to be honest with you, they're nothing special. I found them actually quite easy to find. Even the vanishing card, actually, in this level, I found fairly reasonable to find. So, yeah. I mean, they do the same stuff as that's, what I oh, mentioned earlier. So, yeah. They're, they're okay. Um, visuals. I actually have to agree with Phil a little bit with this one. It's too green. <laughs> it is actually too green. <laughs> but it's also not green in a sort of pleasant green way it's a yeah, dark it's, dark it's a horrible, green yeah um i see what they were trying to go with here they were trying to give it a kind of more darker horror feel with the film and i guess more with what the theme of goblet is which is fine but the forbidden forest here just feels bland with this color scheme this color palette just makes the whole level super bland and I hate to say it, but the level is such a copy and paste in areas in its design as well that it just does not help at all with trying to make this level visually stand out. In fact, the only thing that makes it stand out visually is literally fire. That's it. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very common. Um, although, actually, I will mention that the ruins that you see which we're getting up to in the video actually the ruins bit that actually does look quite cool i will give them that that is a really interesting idea the problem with it is it doesn't make any sense as to why it's here because again there's no like background to why it's in the level it's just there and that annoys me because it's a really cool design and it gives that feeling to the player like, they're sitting there going, oh, this is a cool area. I wonder what this is for. But you'll never know. Because we have no idea why it's there. <laughs> it's never explained. Um, I guess it might have been, like, some kind of fort or something that used to be in the forest. I don't know. But, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll never know. Um, but a cool design, either way. I like the design of it. Uh, audio at this level, to be honest with you, it wasn't that special. I mean, you have your action sequences, of course, when you get enemies appearing, which is fine. But again, nothing particularly groundbreaking. And as for, like, the general audio at the level, it's mostly just hearing the dragon screaming and breathing fire everywhere. So, yeah, I mean, cool, I guess. But it didn't really do a lot for me, if I'm honest. It really didn't. So I'm afraid Jeremy's soul didn't quite succeed with this one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I mean, that's about it, I think, really, for what I have to say for uh, this awful level. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, nice. man, that was that was an evil one to deal with. Right, 
so I guess we'll have a quick look at the chat, see what people have said. People are probably I, very upset that I <laughs> said I think that. John and Roberto liked this level more than we did. Yeah, I can see that. He said, I like that, Alex, dear. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I have 100% of this game a thousand times. I feel very sorry for you. <laughs> I really do. What happened to you? What made your brain possibly want to do that? <laughs> do you need some help? We're we're happy to provide help in any way that we can, which is just go and play any of the earlier games. It will make your life feel a lot better. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> um, I'm surprised you guys like it so much. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. See, someone understands our point of view. <laughs> I felt like it was a little pointless. <laughs> I wanted to get back to the main story. <laughs> I mean, that is definitely one way of putting it. I'm not sure I'd quite say it was pointless. It did have some kind of plot, but yeah, not a lot. Um, what else have we got here then? So, they lost the plot. <laughs> Pretty much. I don't even think about Hagrid. Uh, I didn't even think about Hagrid. Yeah, it's a really important point, actually, because everyone really loves these games for Hagrid, right? He's like a massive part of the games. And in this game, he's literally in a JPEG cutscene for like two seconds, and that's it. And it's quite mm -hmm. disgraceful. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't understand why they use so many creatures in this game, rather than some we're already familiar with. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, they kind of wanted to do something different, I think. And good on them. They didn't do it right, but good on them. Uh... Who'd have thought a forest was green? Indeed. Uh, so John said that the level he would give a 5 out of 10. Ooh. That's high, man. Um, uh, the Bubba... What did you call them? You called them Bubba Tubers, right? Or was it Blubber Tubers? What did you call them, Phil? Uh, yeah, there's no L. It's just like... Bubba tubers. Bubba tubers. Bubba tubers. Okay, I'll go with that. Bubba tubers. I can never remember half of the names of the enemies in this game because I hate them that much. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, Bubba tubers then, what, what we got here. So, uh, Bubba tubers are such a pain. I find it quite funny flicking them. Yeah, I suppose it's somewhat amusing, but they're still annoying. Uh, that's true. They're so weird. Look, I was 13, 14, had a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <don't know> <laughs> oh dear, and a massive Harry Potter nerd. I genuinely like some of the levels and things in this game. That's fair enough. Like I said, you're entitled to your opinion. Don't worry about it. I'm only having a bit of fun. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Oh. Bob's gives it a one, Chip Games two. Okay. So, uh, oh my god, Roberto gave it a 7. Okay, he's going to be very disappointed by what we have to say. So, <laughs> okay. you went first, so first. what's your score? Okay, so this is off not... Because I didn't go back into it and play it again and again. So mm. mine's probably not... I'm not as um, mentally damaged by this level as you are. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give it a 3, because I think, although... It's technically more interesting than the tutorial ones. Slightly. The, the like the presentation in terms of the forest being that green colour and are so boring just like drags it back down again. So I'm gonna give it a three. Which you're gonna say is very high, I'm sure. Yep. <laughs> yes I am. A three. Oh dear. People might not like what I have to say. So I find this level a miserable creature. It's something that I detest with a massive passion. Something that I never ever want to play if I ever look at this game or go near it, which I have to admit is not that frequent, although it has been somewhat lately. Uh, but you guys want the series, so what can I say? But anyway, um, yeah, it, it gets a 1 out of 10 from me, I'm afraid. <laughs> I absolutely despise this level. It's better than the Pixie Encounter from Prisoner of Azkaban. I'll give it that, but <laughs> that's about it. That's true. That's 
I'll give it that. That's like it's one positive. <laughs> yeah, literally, that is probably the only positive I can give this level. Otherwise, I really hate this level. Sorry, I just cannot stand it. And I mean, Phil has not gone back through this level, I don't think, to get all the shields constantly. No, I, this is... I When I had to go back and get extra shields, this is the one level I did not go back to. See... And I know probably why you would not want to do that. <laughs> and I think that from the sounds of it, I made the correct decision. You did make the correct decision. See, I have done that. And it's just pain. It's pain. It's like I just had butchered surgery. <laughs> That's what it feels like. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's bad. Um, anyway, what else did people say quickly? So... Uh, Roboto said a 7 out of 10 not the last time we'll disagree tonight no it won't be I'm sure it won't <laughs> <laughs> I know it happened again let the games begin indeed uh, it's okay <laughs> I do like seeing your opinions Roboto because you always have such good reasons to back you up yeah fair enough I mean he does to be honest he actually does uh, but like I said you know everyone's entitled to their opinion if you like it you like it good on you but not everyone likes it, so there you go. <laughs> um, you'll get to hear the level I hate when it comes. <laughs> Fair enough, John. Uh, right, let me just quickly look at the poll results. That's what I like. Round of applause here. Round of applause. Wait, what did you score it? Did you give a number? Yeah, I gave it a one. Oh, a one. Sorry, I, was, I, I, I can't remember if I blocked that out of my brain already. You did book it out, obviously. Yeah, I gave you a one. Um, yeah, so from the poll, <laughs> and I'm clapping everyone because I applaud you for because no one loves it making Please. the right decision. So we got 25% said it's awesome, <clears throat> questionable. 22% uh, said it's okay. Uh, to be fair, I did put it is green okay, but yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then 56% said ooh. Wow. That's what I like to see. You know what? You get another round of applause for that. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> you did the right thing. <laughs> oh, man. What a terrible level. Right. Uh, we'll anyway. end that poll, and I will set up the next poll for the next level, which is... Oh, God. What is, what is the next one? Prefix bathroom. <laughs> you don't like it. You'll understand why. Anyway, um, yeah, you, you come up with some cool thing to say while I create the next poll, I guess. Um, someone come up with an actually good reason why this isn't the worst level in any video game ever. Oh, wait, sorry, because the pixie encounter exists. That's why. Um, <laughs> it's just, yeah, like, this level just bizarre. Like, it's just not good, and it's so plain, and I don't know. It's like they get, I mean, okay, it does look like a creepy forest, I guess, mm -hmm. but, like, I don't know. I need, we need to move on from this level. Why do I keep talking about it? It's because it's still like, it's still like on, on my screen. Well, it's because I, I'm, I'm, doing doing I'm doing the poll. I'm doing the poll. Give me a chance. <laughs> Put anything else up quick. <laughs> <laughs> this is where Let's it just up. comes up with something random on the screen. It's just like, look, there's the contract <laughs> with Phil. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm on the, uh, there we the go. Harry Potter wiki for, for the, <laughs> the booba tuber. And... <laughs> They've even got a picture of it, of Harry using the season pull charm to pull on a booba tuber growing in the Forbidden Forest, and it's just like a screenshot of the game. So not even the wiki is safe. <laughs> Does the wiki say anything good about it? Does it just go, this is a creature that shouldn't exist? <laughs> so apparently, I think it's in the books. It is, yeah. Yeah. So I don't think they, I don't think they gave it a review, put it that way. <laughs> Um, I don't think they gave it a review. <laughs> then, okay, here's the etymology of the word. Mm. I don't know if it's booba or boobo or whatever. Maybe it's boobo, boobo tuba. Probably, probably is. Know. It probably is that. Seems to be a compound of the words boobo or bubbo, the swelling of the lymph nodes, seemingly like a large blister that accompanies infections like the bubonic. Oh my god! Yeah, like the bubonic plague. That's yeah. where it comes from. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah, okay, fair and enough. Tuba. We all know what tuba is, like a potato. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Actually, wow. I did not know that. That's quite interesting to hear, to be honest. That is interesting. 
intriguing. Although I was about to say, I don't know why in the Death Eaters, they did just plant a load of those around Hogwarts and just fire them at the Death Eaters. Like, imagine firing one of those into the <laughs> into all the Snatchers' faces. <laughs> It'd just be I'm like... Sure, I'm assuming we can get someone to mod it into the game for you, because I know you want to play it again. <clears throat> no. <laughs> Good God, no. And also, those games are literally unmoddable. They're horrendous. <laughs> you don't even know how painful those are. Right, anyway. Get me off this crap level. Uh, right. <laughs> So, I go first this time. Yay! Yep. Alright, so just for everyone's info, the poll for the prefix bathroom level, oh yeah, I forgot about this, is up on the uh, chat now, so you guys could go and vote away for this level, all you like. Uh, right, so prefix bathroom. How useful is this level? Uh, Plot-wise, it is interesting, because... It sort of takes the whole idea that's in the film where Harry sticks this egg under the water and sort of expands it for no real good reason. <laughs> By Ron and Hermione are also, for some reason, in this bathroom. I mean, I understand it's a game point of view, but still. And uh, Ron is just a clumsy idiot, as he tends to be a lot of the time. And wax Harry, and then the entire egg goes down the freaking sewer system, which just creates pain for every player on the planet. Anyway, so, yeah, that's that's the usefulness of the plot. <laughs> As for the level itself, is it useful for any other reason? No. Cool, that, that gets that one out of the way quick. <laughs> <laughs> is this a fun level? Okay, I'll say this much. It... It's not fun, but it definitely has some interesting sort of feel to it. Um, I guess I quite like... This is weird for me to say. I never thought I'd say this. I quite like a sewer system. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it it just, you know, it, it's an interesting idea. So I like that idea, I suppose, as a level um, in this game. As we've never really seen much of that in the Harry Potter games before this, other than, like, I think the Game Boy Advance Prisoner is the first time we saw that. Uh, so yeah, I like it, and it just kind of adds a bit of fun, in my opinion, to seeing a level that you don't see very often in Harry Potter. So yeah, I'll give it that. Uh, other than that, though, is it fun at all? No. Replaying this level to get all the shields is actually really annoying. Um, out of a level of annoyance, I would have to give it probably an 8. And one of the big reasons for this is this is the one level that literally says to the player, here's five shields or more that you can pick up around in one location. By the way, good luck having to redo all the puzzles to pick up every single one of these freaking shields every time because we're going to quit you out the freaking level every single time that you get a shield. <sighs> all I can say is, Debs... I actually hate you for this. <laughs> this level is pain for 100%. Because every shield practically is in one area. In one spot, pretty much. There are a couple that are spread out, but most are in one area. And it's just insulting that to get one of the shields, a lot of the time you have to do like the puzzles to remove obstacles in the way to get to the other shields as well. So you then have two or more shields available for you to pick up and you can only choose one. And it's like it's like a game of deal or no deal, but the end result is crap either way. <laughs> it's awful. I hate it. So whoever did that in this level specifically, dev-wise, you made a terrible decision and I wish you never did that. Um, so yeah, it, it's bad. Uh, how difficult is the level? It's not that difficult until the end of it, main plot-wise. And what I mean by that is when the pipes start to sort of explode almost and there's a load of gas that comes out of them. Um, mainly the reason this is difficult is because it's very painful and if you even remotely get caught in it, you're screwed. You'll be lucky to get away from it. But also the AI keep running into them because the AI is crap. And as a result, they keep dying. So that's not helpful. Um, and also the very end bit, you have all of those pipes going off with the steam 
And then you also have a ton of Urklings to fight off. That's quite challenging, actually. That was difficult. I have to say they nailed that one when it comes to difficulty. So nice one, devs. Uh, yeah, other than that, it's not too bad, though. Uh, secrets of the level, pretty average. Nothing special here. Again, similar to what we've had in the other levels. Just a little bit more challenging to find. I will say that the vanishing card in this level is actually really quite difficult to get in my opinion it's really one of those cards where if the ai doesn't cooperate and help you in killing the salamanders to go and get there to get that vanishing card you will not get there in time so it can be quite difficult for that reason so the ai is very dependent on that vanishing card but the other secrets yeah nothing too groundbreaking uh audio of this level um, to be honest, there's not a lot I have to say with the audio of this level. I look at my notes, it basically just says Steam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's literally my audio <laughs> note, is Steam. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I think all I can really remember then, for the most part, is the Steam is quite nice sounding. There you go. That's, that's all I have to say with the audio of this level. Uh, and then, visual-wise, I forgot to say about the visuals. Visually, I actually don't mind the look of this level. I quite like it. It gives me that kind of Victorian feel sewer system style to it. But it also mixes up a magical feel in places, which is interesting. I, I like the mix. Um, other than that, I think it looks really nice for a sewer. <laughs> it's a strange ten saying. Out of ten, really but it, nice for a sewer. That's, it, that's... I mean, as your review. it's true. It really does look quite nice for Azure. <laughs> um, and also the bathroom bit at the beginning, of course, looks nice too, which I expect because, you know, it's, uh, it's like a VIP bathroom, right? Prefects only. Um, <laughs> it's where they go to have a bit of cool down after all night long patrolling going, hey, you, to catch students out. Uh, right. And yeah, I mean... That's, I think, about it for this level. So uh, I'll hand it over to Phil. Cool. Um, again, I think because I didn't play... The, actually, I think I played this one a little bit. Like, like a few times. Yeah, because I didn't do the forest as much. So I think when I went back to get more shields, I had to do this one. I don't remember it being as annoying as you say. Um, but obviously you've played it more recently than me. But um, mm. <clears throat> anyway usefulness wise if i mean of course they dropped the egg like of course <laughs> they did like just to give us something to do um but whatever so plot wise you know technically i suppose this moves along the plot by taking us on a detour um <laughs> i don't remember it being too difficult i vaguely remember getting a bit lost at some point and I think some of the steam was a bit tricky. Although I can't remember if it was me or if it was the AI getting stuck in the steam. It was probably that, to be honest. The most difficult bit for me that I remember was getting them to actually help with pulling down some of these stupid metal platforms because <laughs> they just don't want to help. They just, they're useless. Um, I feel like I remember it being fun, like a bit puzzly, um, and, you know, like bits to rotate and whatever. And pulling the, the giant taps is amazing, just because you're pulling a giant tab. Um, I don't remember... Yeah, I don't remember it being as frustrating. I don't remember it being as frustrating as you say it was. For some reason, <laughs> I have some fond memories of playing this level. Mm. Um, but I think it probably does mostly come down to how it looks, because I, I do really like how this level looks. Mm. Um you're right in terms of it is feeling like a sort of big old Victorian style sewer system, but kind of magical. Mm. This this level really makes me think of um, Lemony Snicket. Mm. I think the first one, mm -hmm. actually, kind of a combination of the like the first three because it's like mechanical. I don't know something about it. It's 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 kind of like because it's a bit ornate, but also industrial. Like it's. It's giving me more that than it is Harry Potter, but I don't mind that because, you know, it's always good to have variety. Um, mm. Yeah, like, 
this this I think because it's Victorian, probably that's really the reason why it's giving me Lemony Snicket. Because really in the films, especially for Harry Potter, not a lot of it I would say is like Victorian inspired, whereas this is like very like steam not steampunk, but like just sort of like steam the era of steam in the Victorian times, yeah. Um mm. so in conclusion, I did like this level and I don't but I also don't remember it being as annoying as it was, so that's probably why. So for some reason I love this level when everyone else doesn't like it that much. I I like the way you said you love it, and then immediately I just read a comment from Roberto that says this level pain steam pain, <laughs> which is literally <laughs> is, what I said. This is me not one hundred percenting, not having to get all the shields, just having to go back and get a few more shields. Yeah, um, I, I think going back in it a few times is okay, hmm. but not going back to get everything. I think the thing is here. You're going to have people here who have played this game and have 100% of the levels, like me, and then you're going to yeah. have people who haven't done that. And yeah, believe just me, like through the game. Oh, there's an irk thing that just fell through the floor there. Uh, <laughs> it's a big deal, you know, it makes a big difference. Um, that was interesting. I wasn't expecting to see that. I don't even remember that in my gameplay. Well, well you know, I don't remember my gameplay as well. <laughs> uh, right, so I just want to read some of the comments before we give our scores. Uh, let me see, let me see. So John said, and it's here. So I can tell this is John's most hated level. Uh, <laughs> I never got this far, but I, <laughs> but I will base my opinions <laughs> of the video you are showing. Fair enough, Chip, fair enough. Uh, this level is pain, yep. Absolutely hate this level. Uh, but why would, you, why would Hogwarts have such a beautiful design sewer? Because why would it not have such a beautiful design sewer? I mean, the Chamber of Secrets is pretty freaking beautiful, <laughs> considering what it's housing. Um, right, what else have we got? It's nothing but game filler. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, nice egg, though. For some reason, I could never <laughs> get the game to be bright enough. Fair enough. Uh, there are no options in the game, by the way. Just just for everyone's like general knowledge, this game's options are subtitles and that's it so yeah there you go <laughs> uh that's pretty pathetic by the way for a triple a game just to make that clear yeah especially as the games before this had options to change your resolution your sound your controls i mean it's pretty pathetic anyway uh just steam <laughs> yeah that's my that is literally what my notes said <laughs> it's just a steam uh uh, you're not going to rate the tribes of shields. Yeah, I responded back to that, Roberto. We are, but we're doing the main levels first, and then we're going to do the tribes of shields stuff and so on. We're just sort of keeping the main levels together. I call them main levels. I should probably call them filler levels, but whatever. Uh, the only levels. Uh, yeah, the only levels. <laughs> uh, what else have we got here? So. <laughs> Glad to see Hogwarts exterior got 62% approval rating. Fair enough. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Yeah, there is a herbificus section to this level, which is the bit that I was mentioning earlier, actually, in regards to trying to get the shields in the 100%ing bit. It, it's nice that the herbificus is being used here. Don't get me wrong. And it's nice that it's in the sewer of all places where you might potentially find lily pads for whatever reason. Yeah, fair enough. But it's not fun to do. It's evil. <laughs> yeah. I would say pain. Uh, this level is one of the best Harry Potter levels. Fair enough. Fair enough, Matt. You might be uh, on Phil's side with this one. <laughs> Phil likes this level, don't you, Phil? I do. I give it a high score for the design. Mm, yeah, fair enough. Okay, right. Uh, so, scores. Okay. I'll be somewhat fair with this level. And to be fair, I was trying to be as fair as I could with this level when I was writing my notes and stuff. In the end, I think the only thing that wins this level over for me at all, and I mean at all, is some of the art design. 
because the fish statues look cool, the general sewer looks great, and the bathroom itself, where you're at the beginning cutscene and stuff, looks amazing. So yeah, design-wise, looks good, visually. That's about it, though. So, <laughs> for, based on that alone, I'm giving this a very fair, in my opinion, score of 4 out of 10. I think that's fair. <laughs> so, there you go. What about you, Phil? Cool. I'm going to give it a 6, because I I remember it being good. I don't remember it being, like, amazing, but I, I, I remember really, like, I re remember really liking how it looked, mostly. Um, but I don't remember hating it, but yeah, I guess I didn't have to suffer through it as, as much as you did, so... This is pretty anyway. much, like, the whole trend of this stream. You keep saying, I guess I didn't have to suffer as much. <laughs> True. <laughs> well, some levels suit going back into them much more. Like, the first level, I think, I didn't mind going back into a lot. But some of them, I just wouldn't want to go back into again and again and again. So. Fair enough, I suppose. Uh, it's not quite how I feel, but fair enough. Um, right, so what have we got for scores from everyone else while we're here? A mixture, actually. A mixture. So, John said it's visuals and it a 2 out of 10. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I will admit, everyone, I do prefer this level to the Forbidden Forest. It did piss me off this level, but it just looks so much better than Forbidden Forest, so that's why it gets the four. Um, well, people are all over the place. Uh, just games to five out of to... ten. Five out of ten oh. from Roboto. Interesting. I was not expecting that for someone that said they hated this level. <laughs> but fair enough. Uh, then we got a 7 out of 10 from Fair, fair enough. Uh, 7 out of 10 from Matt. Fair enough. I mean, it's interesting, actually. I was not expecting such a variation here. Mm. I really wasn't. I thought people would hate this. Truly, I did. Wow. I'm surprised. You not have surprised me. This is possibly the first time where I've been such... Like in awe of the scores. <laughs> I mean, even Phil surprised me when he said he liked this level. <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah, I think it's nice. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I was surprised. Two out of ten from Chip. You know, it's just <laughs> high five. It's nice, to Phil it's nice that everyone else also seems to be, be kind of split as well, rather than just like one of us being really grumpy for <laughs> once. <laughs> One of us being really grumpy. Hey, I'm not being that grumpy. Sorry, me hating every level. <laughs> uh, I will admit that, of course, you know, if you have some kind of love for the game, then it, it helps. <laughs> it does help. But, yeah. Um, anyway, I, I want to see what the poll is for this. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. 40% said it's great. Interesting. Wasn't expecting that. Interesting. 20% said it's all right. Again, interesting. And then 40% God help me, man. Wow, proper split. That, that is a full-on split. Wow. I, I, think, uh, I think we should end the stream then. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, oh, there goes I think that's the drive. first time we've had... This is the first time we've had a level that's been quite so split like that quite so polarizing uh like the rest yeah. of them a bit less than it was either like some people really liked it and some people kind of thought it was okay whereas this one seems to be like yeah. like love this, it or hate it this really is a split in the middle and this is not the level i was expecting to see this on if i'm brutally honest i was not expecting this one to be that one so you've surprised me today chat and so have you phil but yeah, you surprised me. Okay, well, uh, all right, I'll, I'll take that as it is. Interesting. Okay, right, well, that's the end of the prefix bathroom. So we now yeah. move on to the final out of the side levels, which is herbology. Yeah. Now, Phil, you better like this. You like the green, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Right, I'm going to create the next poll in the meantime. I'll let Phil come up with a bathroom fact for you all. Bathroom fact? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Actually, I mean, it's kind of like a well-known one. An actual fact, if you're like... 
in the UK, but like for some reason, so many like old bathrooms Oops. have separate hot and cold taps. Um, mm. And apparently, it's because the cold tap directly comes from the you know water source that goes in your house, whereas the hot tap will usually because it goes through the boiler. Or I think originally in the past, it would have come through another system that's like higher up in the house, where basically because that water is technically not clean and sanitary in the same way that the cold one, because the cold one is just straight from the source, that one is technically fine to drink. Whereas if it comes from <clears throat> through the rest of the systems, that's like less sanitary. So they would always have separate taps because sometimes with mixer taps, it's possible that the water would go back into your cold water supply or storage or whatever and then just like ruin your drinking water <laughs> and that's why traditionally british houses especially british bathrooms have separate hot and cold taps but yeah. nowadays not so much so if you ever have to go to a house and they have separate hot and cold taps you tell them put in a mixer tap that's well my, that's my advice put in a mixer tap or i'm never coming back here interesting uh thing for you to hear then <laughs> is our house is like that yeah we separate, separate we taps that. yeah so what we have is basically we have separate taps for them all but the cold one is in one separate water tank system and by the way when you were saying that you can't drink the water from them that's not the case here but anyway uh yes yeah, so what, what do you mean because you know you were saying like earlier i didn't catch all of it because i was typing out the poll but i heard you say something about you couldn't drink water from some of the taps or else it was not clean the, or whatever or at least like the the hot water supply is not technically drinking water so you're not supposed to drink it if that makes sense like it's not uh drinking. i think nowadays it's i didn't different. we don't have that here to be fair i don't know about that in other places but here you can you find either tap doesn't matter they're both on separate clean systems so yeah you want to drink that boiler water go ahead I don't drink it, I might add, but yeah. <laughs> but you could, if you wanted to. Uh, right, anyway. I think nowadays you probably could. I, th I think probably like 100 years ago, it would be like dodgy. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I almost would trust it more than the bottled water from stores nice. at the moment. <laughs> it's probably covered in COVID. So yeah, <laughs> I'll be all right with that. Okay, right. Well, that's the end of the prefect bathroom. I'll let people quickly see the cutscene in case you've never seen this before. Because um, why not? Oh, look, there's a dead Harry on the floor as well. <laughs> so there you go. That's the end of the prefect bathroom for you all. It's an interesting ending. It really is. You don't even pick up the egg. Wow. I forgot about that. Okay, right. Herbology. Okay. So, Phil, take it away. Herbology. So, just as like a brief summary of the level, you kind of enter from... It's kind of like it starts outside of the castle. I can't remember the context. I'm assuming it tells you in the, the cutscenes that I obviously don't pay attention to. <laughs> and then basically you first will have to learn the spell... What's it called again? Herbif Herbificus? <coughs> Herbificus, like yeah. Um, which is already a challenge because there's that one stupid gate where I think I tried <laughs> opening it, pulled it open, and then Hermione trapped me behind it. So that was kind. That was very kind to start off with. Um, yeah, so you learn the spell, and the spell basically helps you grow plants, really. Like, there's some areas where there's plants that you can go... And then they grow into... Mostly platforms, I think, yeah. Sometimes it's other bits, but most of the time it's to, like, fill in, like, a space on, like, a staircase where there's some missing stairs, or it's, like, going across some lily pads. That kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that just, like, briefly summarizes the beginning of the level, and then the rest of the level is kind of you going through various greenhouses, outside bits, big staircases. Um, so... Yeah, in that respect, it is useful because you learn a new spell and you do use it. Um, and it's kind of useful in terms of the plot because we're getting the gillyweed, which for some reason, instead of just going to Snape's storage cupboards, we... I don't know where we get it from. Somewhere in the greenhouse, I assume. I can't remember how the level ends besides mm. something falling or whatever. But yeah, we're moving the plot along technically. Again, it's another... It's a bit like getting the bit of goil in the second game. 
I feel it feels the equivalent of that. It's like a fetch quest. But um, mm. yeah. Okay. Is it challenging or difficult? Um, so the the normal parts of the level where you're just walking around, it's fine, whatever. Um there's a couple of blast ended scroots that appear at once, you know, kind of uh, is it no, maybe there's only one, I can't remember. But there's definitely a blast ended screw, and I I feel like it took longer to defeat than the previous one. Um, you know, that's challenging in terms of it being a blast ended screw. However, however, the main challenge in this level is those stupid vampire wasp things. I can't stand these stupid, stupid things. There's these stupid big half moth, half a kind of wasp, horrible flying things that just won't leave you alone and attack you with... Oh, okay, so individually, if they're just there, not like the worst problem in the world. It's more annoying when you're trying to do other things and these stupid wasp things just keep appearing and attacking you. There's one very distinct bit where you have to open this giant flower. I think it was a giant flower or something. Or you have to unfurl like a big thing. And you can unfurl this big flower to attract the wasps temporarily. But there's a whole bit where you're trying to do something that takes a lot of time. And these stupid wasp things keep coming over and annoying you. And then you have to deal with them. And then you have to go back to try and get rid of them. And it's just endless. So for me personally... Challenging, yes, but only because of that. So did that mean the the fun and interesting parts of it were compromised a bit? Yeah, I remember it being fun. Um, at least it's fun unfurling all the plants because uh, we all have plants, as we know. Like plants are my favorite things in games. Um, so that's kind of fun. I guess a bit annoying after a while because you have to keep just sort of doing it, but. Um, is it fun besides that? I guess it's quite fun. There's a few bits to fly around with stones and pulling down other platforms. And there's a bit with the greenhouse, I think, with kind of like different pathways that go across, etc. So there's there's definitely fun bits to the level. Um, and I obviously really like how this level looks, as I'm assuming we all knew I would, because it's plants and a greenhouse. Although this one is a bit more, it's kind of like a bit of a, instead of like the sort of fresh green you get from some of the previous uh, sort of herbology themed levels in Harry Potter, this one's a bit more, it feels like there's a lot of long shadows. We're kind of like near the end of the day. I, it feels like the end of the day, a um, bit more of like a yellowy theme to it. Which I do quite like because it makes it a bit different feeling, which is nice. Um, and then, yeah, all of the structures are nice. All the plants are nice. All that looks really lovely, especially the sort of tower bit at the end is quite nice. And just outside that, the whole bunch of plant pots and things like that. So it's very Herbology-like. They do like putting Herbology levels in the games, actually, which is quite interesting. I don't know why. I guess because it's a bit different, an excuse to do some planty stuff. Um and I feel like I remember there was some relaxing music for a lot of it, which was quite nice. When, you know, when the stupid wasp things aren't there. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the music was like when they were there, or what they sounded like, but they were probably annoying. Um, yeah. So, that's my thoughts for the level. And you'll have to find out whether those stupid wasp things have tarnished it for me, in terms of the score. <laughs> Right, well, uh, interesting. A lot of in-depth stuff there, I have to say. <laughs> You're about to go even more in-depth. <laughs> Basically, it's just a, it's an excuse to have a rant about the stupid wasp things. So I, I will I will be doing the same in a minute. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so just so you're aware, chat, I probably should have mentioned this. I'll When Phil talks, if um, there's something for me to respond back to, I will actually respond back within the chat. So I'll just type out a message rather than always talking all the time because I don't want oh, yeah, to interrupt Phil. I do that sometimes as well. Yeah, I don't want to interrupt Phil, of course, while he's talking about stuff. So, yeah, I'll do it that way. My thoughts are very important after all. They are, indeed. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure Phil will do the same if there's something important to respond to um but yeah anyway 
Uh, also, I am also having to uncensor a lot of your comments, so try and not keep writing those comments because I'm not always going to be around to actually <laughs> do this stuff. Uh, hang on, I'll just read this quick comment before I talk about my points. Everything's so smooth, I would be uh, hilarious to play it on the stream. <laughs> those screams of injured AI and stuff. Yeah, I agree. Um, Yes, everything is very smooth in the gameplays that I do. There are reasons for that, of course. I do fiddle about to make sure that that happens with the games. I'm not going to mention it all here. I mentioned this at the beginning. If you want to know that, then either talk to some of my mods here in the chat or you'll just have to see stuff in my server for the Discord and stuff like that. But anyway, um, yeah. So I'm going to move on to my points of homology. Okay, so here we go. How useful is the level? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, no, so the plot-wise, I guess it gives you an excuse to put the giddyweed into the game, but the way you get it is pretty meh. You get it from a giant chandelier that you blow up. Yeah, I know. Interesting, isn't it? <laughs> You basically destroy the school in order to get the giddyweed. It's, it's a bit random, but still. Neat idea, I suppose, for a game. Make it a bit more exciting. So I'll give him credit on that front. Um, other than that, that's all this level offers in terms of plot. It's completely pointless otherwise. So, yeah. Uh, otherwise, the, like, I guess the content of the level itself for the story I suppose, I mean, it was never really confirmed, and you have to dig around in the game files to see this, but there was meant to apparently be a level for, um, I guess it would have been Care of Magical Creatures. Basically, it's like a Hagrid sort of level that was meant to tie kind of into this level as well. So we almost had Hagrid. We we almost did. Um, and actually, if you look at that coding, you can see that one of the if I'm getting this right, I've just the name of the creature's gone from my head. Is it a Niffler or Sniffler? It is Niffler, isn't it? I think. Um, Which things? They're like tiny little. Uh, how do I describe it? <laughs> they're the ones that Looney Lovegood goes on about at some point. I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. it's called a Niffler. Am I getting this wrong? Anyway, um, I I'm sure it is, someone will correct me in the chat. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, they look a bit like. Um moles yeah 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 yeah. them yeah yes it is a niffler is it yeah that's a niffler a sniffler yeah i got it right then cool uh yeah niffler, so, not sniffler yeah so it is a niffler yeah. okay good good i got it right um yeah so the niffler was apparently meant to play a big role in that level as well um in actually helping you complete a lot of the objectives and stuff so that was meant to tie into this level apparently so i think plot wise this level might have had way more actually to the plot than what we got um but can't confirm that i cannot confirm it because of course we never got the care of magical creatures level in this game we can only just see what was in the files <laughs> so there you go uh but i thought i'd mention it anyway for those of you that are interested in knowing what cut content is like inside games uh right so moving on how fun is the level to be honest with you despite the little shits that are <laughs> the Vosp vampire stupid mosp things. I actually quite like this level. I find it quite fun to play, surprisingly enough. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I like cabology levels. I don't know, but I thought this level was all right. I didn't hate it much at all. It was okay. So, yeah, I would say it's somewhat average fun. Not really fun, but average fun. Uh... But, <laughs> the backtracking, oh boy. <laughs> okay, so the backtracking in this is painful. And the reason it's painful is because of the flying mosps. They're called mosps, by the way, in case you didn't know. Um, they are horrendous. And the main reason they're horrendous is because the AI is not that great at helping you defeat them they tend to just sort of attack them and whack them miles out of your radius to attack them yourself, which is not helpful. But the big thing in particular that's really annoying about them is the fact that they 
are constant. They never stop spawning in some places. So as a result, it just yes, makes so it yes, yeah. impossible. And I cannot stress this enough. Literally impossible to actually open up lily pads <laughs> to go and move blocks or just do anything that involves trying to get something open or moved out of the way. It is so painfully difficult. And while I'm grateful that the devs did think of a way to try and help the player with this problem by giving them giant plant things that they could open up so that the mosps would go to them in order to be distracted, that's great. But here's the problem. They didn't program them in very well. So the, f <laughs> the first problem with them is the fact that they open up for literally about probably seven seconds and then they close again. And it takes longer to open the freaking flowers, I might add. Then on top of that, what's even more insulting is that they only work in a small radius. So, unless the mosps are right next to those freaking flowers at the time, they're completely pointless. So, yeah, neat mechanic idea, executed really badly really badly <laughs> but yeah they they make trying to get 100 percent on this level really quite difficult and painful actually so uh yeah the backtracking in this level i have to say is pretty brutal it's still nice to see like the different parts and designs of the levels i like that but it's just brutal uh right otherwise it's fine uh difficulty at the level the level is not difficult until you encounter the mosps the mosps make this level extremely difficult and they really do. I think if you were playing this level in co-op with a real-life human, it might not be quite as like horrendous to deal with. But with the AI, boy, is it horrible. <laughs> so yeah, I have to say that it, you know, this level can be very difficult when it wants to be. Um, but usually, that's only when the mosps are around. Uh, secrets of the level. To be honest with you, there's nothing very special about the secrets of this level they're fine they're nothing groundbreaking again they're just fine um i don't think there's much else to say in regards to like the vanishing card in this one is quite difficult to get to be fair actually but again it's not like the most awful thing in the world it usually depends on how quick you are opening the lily pads in order to get to the area where that vanishing card is which is not easy <laughs> with the mosps everywhere but you know, you can try your best. Uh, right, so the visuals. I like the visuals of this level. I think it looks visually appealing to the eyes. This is the one time where this game decides to not be quite as dark and gloomy for once, but rather a bit light-hearted and nice. And it's nice they did that. They needed to have at least one level where it looks somewhat nice for everyone rather than it always just feeling depressing and gloomy all the time so yeah i'll give them credit here this level does look visually very nice and visually appealing and i do love the plant life that they have growing on structures and things here they did that really well that looks nice so props to execution for visuals there audio this is possibly the best level in the entire game other than the exception of the next level we're going to talk about for audio. This level's music is fantastic. It goes from the perfect, really calm, beautiful melody music and it's really nice music. Honestly, I think it's like the one thing I'm happy to listen to when playing this game if I ever come back to it. It's nice. Um, but it goes from that to then when you get the encounters to quiet, epic sort of fighting music again. But the fighting music works well here. It fits with the themes of the enemies that you got present. So actually, I'm all right with it in this level. It works. Uh, yeah, so the music, it's good here. It's good. It is good. And then finally, the spell. Habificus. Interesting spell. I like the idea of the spell. I like the way that it's used to finally grow something inside of Harry Potter rather than always using spells to attack something or destroy something. This is actually used to create something, 
which is nice. Obviously, you've got Reparo in later on games, but, you know, here we have got something that grows things, which is just nice. Uh, you know, it's not a spell that you get all the time in Harry Potter games or Harry Potter in general, so it's just nice to see something like that. And uh, it's actually used a fair bit here in this level, so I give them credit again. They made good use of it. Is it explained to the player well, though? No. <laughs> no, it's not. It's very much the case of you pick up the spell book, you learn how to do it yourself, which is okay. But again, for beginner players, that's not a good idea. But there you go. That's just the way the devs went with this game for that. And also, of course, Hippificus is useful in those other, you know, um, levels that we talked about earlier on. So it's nice that that spell that you learn late on in the game here is actually used again earlier on in the game too so it doesn't feel like it's a complete waste of time so yeah props there anyway uh that's all i have to say about herbology oh, oh my there god go. there's jelly beans in the chat and it's considered oh my god it's considered the beans as poo <laughs> that's why it blocked it <laughs> wait what <laughs> So John put some emojis of beans oh, like in the, the chat, same, yeah. and, and it considers it poo. So <laughs> that's literally so a poop emoji. It. it blocked it. I love that. Wow. <laughs> oh, I love YouTube. Sometimes it's good stuff. You know, it's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you see anything interesting other than what I've just seen in the chat while I was chatting away? Not nothing quite like poop, but um. <laughs> People, there's again this one. Instead of being polarizing, it's more I think a whole range of opinions. Some people really don't like it. Some people like it. Some people probably don't mind. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, which yeah I think makes sense. <laughs> it depends. It depends how much you let the the mosp things affect affect you. I think probably it depends who's mentally resilient. The more resilient you are, the more you like this level. That's how it feels. <laughs> yeah, I suppose, to be fair. Um, I love the way when I mention the swearing means I have to keep showing your comments, everyone starts writing the swear words with a load of symbols. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Um, <laughs> they have to get those lily pads kind of excited to open them up. <laughs> Pretty much. Um yeah, I mean, oh, what have we got here? Very interesting, Alex. Thanks for sharing. Didn't know that. What did I share at the time? I'm not uh, really sure. Uh, were you talking about the um about how it was going? Oh, to be the the yeah, the the other cut level from the game. Yes. No worries. I'm here to share all cut content from games. What can I say? <laughs> I have too much background in this stuff. It's like a gift and a curse. <laughs> um, cool. Wow. There's just beans everywhere. Everyone loves beans. I love beans too. True. Beautiful words about the good things in this level. Alex, love your thoughts. Thank you very much, Roberto. Whoa. That's the first positive thing I think I've seen about my comments so far. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, um, Phil, you went first. So first. scoring time. Okay. Um... I'm giving this one a six as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, because it's weird because this one, well, it's not, it's not weird, obviously, but um, it's <laughs> like, it's, it, it's one of those ones where I would give it higher, but the, the MOSP things just ruin it a little bit. It's like, I still, I still like this level. I still think positively about it, but the MOSP things are awful. <laughs> So that kind of drags it down again. Yeah, it's, no, I this get is that. the thing. This is what I was saying before. All these levels, they they almost seem to be good, and then something that they put in just ruins it. Almost like, yeah, not ruins it completely, but you know, there's something that just cuts it back a little bit for me. It's a theme of God but a Fire. It's like they almost did it well, and then they just put something in that just makes it worse. Yeah, I mean, to be fair. It's just, I guess, their uh, their idea of the game is, you know, we want to mm. please players and piss them off at the same time. <laughs> Get a strong response out of players, yeah. Well, pretty much. Uh, yeah, so score-wise for me, 
This is interesting for me because usually I'm quite... I have very strong opinions when there's something I really hate about something in a game. I'm very strong about it and everyone knows this. But <laughs> this is one time where I'm actually going to let it off a little bit. And that's mainly because probably over the years I've kind of learned how to deal with these little flying shits that <laughs> fly around ruining your life. The mosps. So here's the thing. I'm actually going to score this level quite high. I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. I think it deserves That's it. Crazy. It, it deserves it. The music is great. The visuals are great. In general, it's actually an alright level to play. The only thing that lets it down at all is the mosps. They That's are the true, yeah. only thing. But like I said, if you could kind of learn to deal with them a bit more, even with the crap AI, then it's not quite as horrendous. Also, like 100 percenting this level out of pretty much all the levels we've been through other than maybe the exception of hogwarts exterior this one is probably the least annoying to do um so yeah i i think it's all right for that so actually i like this level you know what this level redeems the game a little bit congratulations apology you did well <laughs> All right, so let's see what everyone else has said. I'm sure no one's going to give it quite as much of a uh, high score like I did, to be fair. <laughs> Could be wrong. Um, right, so what we got? We've got 8 out of 10 for everything without the mosp seat. He agrees with me. Roberto actually agrees with me. Wow. <laughs> this is the first time ever we've agreed on something, I swear. Um 14 year old he found a lot of comfort in some parts of this level back when i needed it yeah no, that's fair enough i agree um at least ron isn't really tired and <laughs> consciously going to bed yeah that's fair enough barbs gave it mosps out of 10 fair play uh john gave it an 8 out of 10 what ruins it for me is the mosps yeah fair enough uh <laughs> that should have been my score. I see you, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Why didn't you do that, Phil? <laughs> I'm not clever enough. Dearie me. 3 out of 10 from Mert. The music is good, but the level design is just bad. I can see where you're coming from there, to be honest, Mert. I understand that. I do. I sympathise with people feeling that way, to be honest. I actually really do. Uh, but yeah. There you go. Eight Professor Sprouts out of 15 Mandrakes. Well, <laughs> that's one way that of putting it. Score. Yeah. Three out of ten mosps that like they'd suck. They do suck. They really do suck. Uh, OMG, we gave it the same score. <laughs> Back in the forest, I thought this level here would be the one where we'll disagree the most. In hindsight, it actually was the forest level. Yeah. Yeah, I can be reasoned with. I'm not completely evil. I'm not like a Sith Lord, you know. I do have some kind of Jedi nice uh, traits to me. <laughs> uh, online co-op mode could have saved this game. Yes. <laughs> to be honest, if the game was designed better, it could have saved the game. But yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, eight is good. Yeah, fair enough. What are those creatures dropping from the ceiling? Oh, uh, they were the Erklings. Uh, Erklings, but they're like the super more powerful Erkling things. Where are they? Uh, yeah, these these things. Yeah, they're the Erklings from earlier on in the game. They're just more powerful. Uh, right. Why is the main greenhouse like a skyscraper? It's actually the Shard in London. They travelled all the way to the Shard just to... <laughs> Just to get some gillyweed. That's how you can cook your gillyweed <laughs> before you eat it. <laughs> Don't want to be eating mouldy gillyweed now. Right, let's look at the poll here. I'm interested to see what it's like for this level. So we got love it, 29%. Interesting. Uh, 43%, it's all right. Yeah, okay. And then 29%, not nice at all. Interesting. Very interesting. So it's very much in the middle for this level for the most part. Interesting. Yeah. I guess for a lot of people it's probably a good level, but the mosps just 
Um, it is a shame yeah. the Mosps do really ruin this level. I have to agree. They are literally the bane of this level. They're awful. It mm. could have made them less annoying, in all honesty. Um, it's a shame, because actually it's a cool design enemy, actually. But, yeah. Oh, well. Uh, right, so that is the end of the filler levels, as I like to call them. Yeah. Right, now we're on to the fun levels in the game. <clears throat> I know you're giving it a high score here. Come on. Don't deny it, Phil. <laughs> Me. The dragon task. Right. Let's Me. uh let's start the next poll. In the meantime, Phil will talk to you about guineaweed facts. Or musk uh, facts. Will he? I was gonna ask, what is everyone's favourite apology themed level in the games? So we've got the Incendio in the first Harry Potter. Um, Defindo in the second one. I mean, we're, I'm going to count Lapafors and Draconophores as like the Hobology one because it's like got the plants in the greenhouse. And then there's this one. I don't think the fifth game you could go in the greenhouse, but there wasn't like a set bit there, I don't think. My favorite one is obviously the Chamber of Secrets one because, because it is, the, I, in my opinion, the best one. But the, the Prisoner of Azkaban one follows very shortly i think because it was pretty good still actually and i know everyone else likes incendio a lot as well hmm. Hmm. they're all they're all like the herbology ones are always pretty good mm -hmm. it's just it's just because it's bright and there's a lot of plants really that's probably it <laughs> it's just the plants let's be honest it's, just, it's literally just the just, plants. just the plants <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Don't worry Plants about. Plants just anything look really else. good in games a lot of the time. They really do. Oh, believe me, I've seen many games where <laughs> plants do not look good. <laughs> I think that's a slight overstatement, but fair enough. <laughs> Depends what game we're looking at here. Um, yeah. Anyway. Dragon. Um, yeah, we got the dragon. So. Just before we go straight to the dragon, because it is me going first, isn't it? It is, yep. right? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, just before I do, so people said, um, with different enemy, this level could have been better, yeah. Defendo, or Defendo even. I keep saying Defendo because he says it in the game like that. Defendo, um, second one is best hands down. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Defendo, yeah. Herbology in Chamber of Secrets PS1, fair enough. Yeah, Defindo. Yeah, I think, to be honest, I'd have to go for Defindo, to be honest. <laughs> it is, I think, yeah, the best. Also, can you mod the moss from this game? Oh, I wish. Right. Uh, <laughs> okay, the dragon task. Now, yeah. this one's a fun one, man. Also, the poll is live for you guys to vote for this level. All right. Now we get into the grit of the actual plot. <laughs> we finally get some finally story some so how useful is this level for the plot pretty damn useful given what this game has given us so far <laughs> it does capture what's needed in my opinion for the plot of this actual main task level so Harry goes into the stadium he grabs a fire bolt to fly away from the dragon um, obviously to try and capture the egg he then flies away, of course, like we see here in the level, away from the dragon that's trying to murder him and eat him, uh, and uh, eventually escapes the dragon and then goes and picks up the egg. But yeah, you know, it, it gets across everything needed when it comes to the first tribes of task. So yeah, solid stuff. Good stuff. I like it. You know, they got it right. <laughs> Other than that, is it a useful level? Not particularly. See, if we were able to fly the broom at other times way, during the yeah. game i would say this was actually really helpful but we don't so sadly no uh which is this shame it's a shame it really is uh how fun is this level i actually do really enjoy this level i think it is very entertaining to play despite how short it is it is quite fun to play it it's just satisfying to be able to fly on a broom any way you want kind of here in this linear level while being attacked by a brutally dangerous dragon at the same time 
with parts of the environment falling apart down on you as well as like fire everywhere and stuff while also having the ability to click like beans and the speed power-ups making the firebolt super fast and stuff uh, I also love the fact that you go through different environments here. So you go through like the whole beginning bit in the forest with the train and stuff. So then Hogwarts, which is really cool, by the way. And then also going through to like the whole waterfall bit and stuff as well by the lake. So nice environment change throughout this level. Good stuff. What I like to see. They're really trying to make sure the player gets around everywhere around Hogwarts with this. And they did a good job of that. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a really fun level. Uh, how difficult is this level in my opinion it's not difficult at all it's really easy I, I don't find this level even slightly difficult I guess the beginner player might struggle a tiny bit with the controls as they can be a little bit all over the place I suppose but it's nothing particularly that challenging so yeah in my opinion it's pretty simple this level it's definitely the easiest out of the tri wizard task levels um other than that, visually, I kind of said it a bit already, but it looks visually great, this level. It definitely does look visually great. So, you know, I think they executed that well. Let's get back to the actual level here. Here they go. Yeah, it looks visually great, in my opinion. I like the difference in the visual change as well through the different parts of the environment of Hogwarts. So, nice to see. It's also nice to not see the grey tone here as well, quite so vigorously. It's around in, like, the forest in places, but not too... Like, it doesn't stand out as much basically audio oh boy the audio at this level ho, ho, ho. it's good audio and especially when you get to hogwarts because the thing is at the beginning you get the very tense you know it really puts you in the moment audio and then when you get to hogwarts you get this kind of audio that gives you that sense of relief a little bit because the dragon doesn't actually attack you in Hogwarts. Hogwarts is like the kind of safe haven part of the level and then the music captures that safe haven feel but it also gives you that epicness in the music as well. It tries to make the player feel like they are epic in what they are doing right now. It does it well. It's good audio man. Good audio. Really love the actual music that they put in this level. Awesome stuff. So yeah, I think that sums up this incredibly fun level for me. Cool. Yeah, I say that basically summarizes most of what I think as well. I really, I, I do like this one. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, moving the plot along, great. One of the challenges actually is part of the story. Perfect. Um, and I don't know how difficult it is. I think when I played it, I didn't fail it. But I can't remember how far down my health got. Because um, things can like hit you and that. Hmm. So it is technically, I guess, challenging. And, you know, you can fly into the beans and all that kind of thing. I think it's probably not that act like technically that difficult. But it definitely feels like a kind of a good challenge because of the speed of the whole thing. Um, which is obviously tied a lot into how fun it is because it is so fast, which is great. Thrilling. Um... Yeah, and it, I think it looks really good. Like, zooming around the castle is obviously amazing, like, under that bridge bit, um, around all the tunnel, uh, all tunnels, towers, um, and all the bit on the lake and the forest. Uh, yeah, pretty much as you said. Yeah, there's, like, bits with waterfalls, the random bits of fire falling from the sky. Um, so, yeah, it's really exhilarating and a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it's good. And actually, yeah. Barb's made a very interesting point, which, to be fair, I didn't think about here, which is she said that she likes the fact that the cutscenes here actually move. Oh, yeah. You know, they, they have more than just the, like, still, flat, nothing. <laughs> there is actually some movement here. I like that. So, yeah, you know what? I agree. I 100% agree with that. You're right, Barb's. And it's like one of the only times they do it <laughs> so fair play to them i suppose in making that good okay i see that the chat agrees in a lot of ways that this level is good i thought that was going to be the case just, let's be real it's like the best level in the game <laughs> i think most that's, people the sad really thing like is it. That's, that's probably true it, it is true and it's literally like for less than three minutes yeah it is true though it really is true um 
Yeah, I mean, let, let, let's be real here. This is a, a absolute beast of a level. So I think we're going to go straight into the ratings with this one. Go on. I think you'll be surprised to hear it. Now, I want to say that this is similar to what Phil said earlier about this not being the same sort of ratings as the previous yeah. games, because it's definitely not. But in regards to this game alone, I certainly am giving this level a 10 out of 10. Wow. It nails it on every angle. I don't have anything I dislike about this level, other than maybe it's a bit too short. But other than that, freaking awesome level. Aced it. Absolutely aced it, the dev team here. And this is the most important level, in my opinion, to ace in Goblet of Fire, as it is the part that a lot of people find the most important part of Goblet of Fire. So, yeah, credit oh, to the, the devs. Actual try was a tournament. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, credit to them. They did well here. There you go. 10 out of 10. Cool. Uh, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I think it's pretty good. I say pretty good. It's like, yeah, probably the best and most exciting level in the game. I don't know, like, I can't think of, like, an actual thing that I would specifically change, but I think it could always probably be improved in some ways. I don't know how exactly. Because I think it's good that it's short as well. I think it would be too much if it was too long. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it would have been nice if there was a bit, like, leading up to the chase or something like that. I'm not sure, but, yeah. I mean, 8 out of 10 is still, like, pretty good, so... It is, yeah. yeah. I think, I mean, yeah, I agree. I like the fact that this level is somewhat short, although I feel like it could have been a bit longer. But yeah, other than that, I mean, it's fine other than that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that affects the score in my personal opinion. Nah. So yeah, there you go. And 10 out of 10. People in the chat, they like it as well, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. People really enjoy this level. It's yeah. nice to see. It is nice to see. Oh, uh, everyone's got the same opinion for once. Yes, for once, <laughs> everyone is actually being quite positive about this. And in all honesty, though, when it comes to this level, I didn't expect anyone to say that they hated it. I just didn't. Because everyone that plays this game, this is the only level that I ever hear praise for, ever. So, I expected it to be good. <laughs> mm. So, so far, score-wise... I mean, we've got some pretty positive-looking scores here. I'm sure people are probably amazed that I'm so happy. <laughs> They're like, he hates Goblet. He always says he hates it, but he's so happy. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I have to say here we've got a 10 out of 10 from Justin, best part of the game. I would definitely agree with that. Uh, I give it an 8 out of 10. I like the visuals and the audio, but flying mechanics feel similar to HP6. Yeah, I guess the fly mechanics, like I said earlier, are a bit clunky, but they're not that bad. I've probably dealt with a lot worse, to be honest. <laughs> uh, Cutscenes are awesome. More of this, please. <laughs> yeah, 8 out of 10. Looks like a nice level to play. Far better than any of the others. Yeah, indeed. 9 out of 10. I would have liked if more time had spent around Hogwarts Castle. Yeah, I do agree with that bit, actually. I definitely replayed this one the most. Yep. Same with me, to be honest. <laughs> uh, right, what else have we got here? 8 out of 10 from Barbs. I also think it's the best part of the game. It looks like they were able to take the time with this level. Yeah. I think they did, to be honest. <laughs> Probably because they knew it was important. Uh, 10 out of 10 from Roberto. Very fun. Level, action, fast pace, fantastic score. Yep. The worst thing about this level is that it shows a Hogwarts castle and grounds that would be great to free roam in. Yeah, I, I agree. That is quite sad. Uh, that's the sad thing for the whole Goblet Fire in a nutshell. 10 out of 10, 100 out of 10. I love this level with a burning passion. Sonic loves this level like Ron loves beans. 5 out of 10. Interesting. We have a middle ground with this one. Interesting, Mert. A 5 out of 10. We have a middle ground. Fair enough. Okay, so looking at the poll, we've got 67% that said amazing stuff right here. We've got 17% that said not that incredible, to be honest. Fair enough. And we've got 17% that said meh. So there you go, Phil. That is the overall ground that everyone stands Ooh. on with this level. Solid. Solid. Okay, we'll end that poll. And while Phil comes up with an interesting dragon facts i will set up the next poll well we won't do a dragon fact but <laughs> we will consider imagine if the flying mechanic was like this in the other games 
like in the first imagine doing the training in the first game but at this speed i think that would be impossible um or what if, if it was in the, the to be fair this is very similar to what it's like in the second game just a lot faster and better hmm. um where it's just on rails um where this actually makes sense of that it's on rails because you're you know flying away from the dragon whereas in the second game i don't think the quidditch necessarily makes sense that it's on rails but was probably easier for them i'm sure yeah uh was there quidditch in the third game there wasn't was there nope <sighs> no no just but like, big... I, yeah i was trying to like come up with the, the image of it in my brain and i realized i couldn't that's one of the reasons why Quidditch World Cup exists. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, the next poll is up and ready. So we are now going to be moving on to the lake task, which is the second driver's task. And, uh, yeah, well, I think, I believe you are first, <clears throat> Phil. I am. Off you go. Okay. Is it useful... It advances the plot again because it is one of the challenges. Ding, ding, ding. 10 out of 10. That's my score. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go to fun or interesting first. So it's another on rails one, but it's like a lot longer than the dragon one. Um, and I don't think in a good way, personally. I don't remember this one being too fun. It's a lot slower and longer... And I think I remember having, like, only, like, 10 health left for, like, half of it. And I was like, don't die, don't die, don't die. I don't want to have to do it again. I don't want to have to do it again. Um, yeah. So, is it difficult? I guess, technically, I found it difficult because I died so much. I can't remember exactly how the mer people attack. I think you just have to get them before they get you, or, like, maybe you can avoid their attacks, I'm not sure. But I remember there being quite a lot of mer people. Um, and there was a few bits where you have to kind of get rid of those random... I don't know what they were. Was it supposed to be bits of a ship or an old castle or something? Like, as you're going towards uh, this parts thing with of the points? Yeah, it's part of, like, the ship, basically. Yeah. I remember that <clears throat> feeling stressful and difficult, but actually I don't think, I can't remember if you die when you just reach it anyway, so I, I'm not sure if it is actually technically difficult or not. Um, but it felt a bit difficult. Um, but that's kind of it in terms of the challenge. It's just like attacking them before they attack you and like avoiding. Um, and then presentation wise, I think it looks pretty good in terms of it looks pretty much exactly what the big lake should be like um you know it's like deep and blue i think even though it's basically this is exactly the same color scheme as the forest i like it a little bit more but it's still a little bit dull but it is kind of what you imagine it would look like anyway maybe it would just be a bit more blue rather than green um but i think it looks all right yeah it looks as i would expect um and i think i remember there were some nice bits of music that were a bit more like slow maybe a bit like um what's the word not creepy but like unsettling a little bit i think like when you're not being attacked when you're kind of just floating around yeah like a bit sort of unsettling sort of deep which was nice and it suits it and then there's some more fast music when you're being attacked but i don't know i feel like i didn't really like it though i didn't really like this level to be honest i feel like i haven't really said that much in negative stuff but it's just not it's just very slow and not a lot to <clears> it and i feel like i was just waiting for it to be over actually mm. rather than actively enjoying it mm. yeah mm -hmm. that's that's my thoughts Fair enough. So I think before I say anything about my thoughts, I want to get something very important off, like off the back of any of the rating stuff here. This level 
could have been the greatest level in the entire game, in my opinion, if it had had free roam in it. See, in my opinion, this level, instead of being the linear level that it is that sets you on a path that you have to follow through with a timer that you've got, why not instead have a fully open, explorable, underwater lake level, which we'd never had before at this point, by the way, in a Harry Potter game, and just make it so that you had a specific amount of time set that you had to do it in, and then, boom, you could then, you know, either fail the task and not rescue the people in time, or you rescue the people in time, and then you complete the task. But that way, they could have done a lot more with the design of this level. It could have been more interesting. The encounters that you have with, like, the uh, octopus creatures and the mermaids would have been a lot more frightening, in my opinion, because you might not have expected it. It would have just popped out of nowhere, especially if you were, like, free roaming around some of the ruins and stuff. Honestly, this level could have been amazing if it had free roam in it. So that already is a major deal breaker for me that it's linear. <laughs> Just to get that across straight away. <laughs> okay, other than that, is this level useful? Yeah, it carries on with the plot. It explains the plot fairly well. Although I have to say that the ending of this level is extremely abrupt where Harry just sort of casts and it you know, it sort of shows that he saves two people, but you don't actually see that or have any proof of it in a cutscene or anything afterwards. It just it kind of happens. <laughs> so I mean, it it works at the beginning. I think the plot of this level, the rest of it is just kind of not there. So yeah, I'd say it semi works, but that's about it. Other than that, it doesn't teach you anything else useful. Again, if you could have you know done some swimming in the rest of the game, this would have been quite a useful level. But you can't do that. So, yeah, good stuff there. Um, is this level fun? Good God, no. This level <laughs> is not fun. This level is not fun at all. It is the biggest slog I think I've ever had to go through in the whole of this game. Like, okay, to put it in perspective, there are those levels that are just, you know, the levels that are there to fill out the game and they're a slog going back through them trying to get all the shields again and that. But at least with that, you have something that you know you can do in a specific amount of time. With this, it's just slow for the sake of being slow. It's deliberately made slow to make the level feel longer. But that's not a good thing, because the level is not fun. <laughs> Which brings me on to my fun point. This level is not fun. It's not fun at all. It's boring as hell. It's literally so dull. I can't express just how boring it is to go around basically casting a spell by pushing one button on your controller and a couple of creatures around the environment randomly running into some gillyweed to speed yourself up at points. It's like the devs knew that you wanted to go faster so they made it so the mermaids actually eat the gillyweed that you need to go faster just to piss you off. But uh, <laughs> anyway... Yeah, I mean, other than that, it's just slow. I mean, if there was some exciting gameplay actually in these bits, I wouldn't mind. And the other thing that pisses me off as well about this level, which I actually find brings me into the fun and difficulty part of this level, is the controls. They're awful. They're really bad. And, like, the turning when you're swimming normally, it's just not fluent. It feels like I'm a robot and it takes 50 years to actually make a turn or go up and down. But the big thing here which really pisses me off is the controls when you go up and down are normal. So when you push it up on the analog stick, you go up, you push down, you go down. But then when you get to the encounters, right, where you have to actually fight all of these uh, like creatures like the octopus and that, it switches the controls around for absolutely no reason whatsoever so you then have to push down on your controller to go up and up to go down and I always remember sitting here when I was younger and now when I'm older thinking why did the devs do this did they just forget to switch this to be the correct way round or did they just not even check it because <laughs> it's stupid and it actually makes the level difficult because when you get into those encounters, you're thrown into that fight straight away. So if you're not prepared for that change in control scheme, it can really take you by surprise. And you can lose a lot of health in those as well, I might add. Because, you know, you get attacked a lot. So, yeah. 
awful, awful design there on that front. Really bad. Um, otherwise, is the rest of the level difficult? I mean, it's not horrendous, but it can be quite difficult trying to avoid a lot of the projectiles that are shot at you just because, again, the controls are so clunky for the turning. It's not fluid. You know, when I push the analog stick left, I expect Harry to do a rapid left turn, not for him to take 15 years to do a slight turn to the left. So then, as a result, it makes it almost impossible to avoid a lot of the projectiles in this level. I think it's terrible design. Honestly, this level is just a terrible design altogether. But yeah... Uh, visuals it's visually very green <laughs> it's got a lot of green alright <laughs> all I can say is Dumbledore really needs to get filched down here to clean up this mess it's not looking good man um, yeah I expected what I really expected with this level is that when you're higher up nearer the surface which you are at points by the way in this for it to be a lot clearer the water and for it to be more blue and then when you get further down for it to be darker, greener, sort of black-like, which I guess they kind of capture, but they don't capture it very well, in my opinion. It's, like, barely there. They just sort of went with the tone green and sort of said, yeah, that'll do, call it a day. <laughs> it doesn't help, by the way, that all the enemies in the level are also green. So, mm. nice one, devs. <laughs> <laughs> really aced it uh, music otherwise in this level um, I mean it's what it is there's nothing special about the music in this level if I'm honest uh, the creature noises are quite creepy I'll give them that they definitely got that right but other than that there's just nothing really special about this and uh, actually I should have mentioned this earlier but these sections where you have to attack these creatures to get past bubbles and that if you could actually aim where you wanted your wand to shoot then what I would be doing here in this gameplay is I would be shooting the bubbles and ignoring all the enemies but because you can't do this and it randomly like locks onto what it wants for you it makes this very painfully difficult to deal with and just not fun at all. So yeah, really bad game design this level in a nutshell is just bad design. <laughs> That's my thoughts. I think uh, Phil would probably agree with that. <laughs> oh yeah. He's already just like, geez man, he's just gone from being super positive to super negative. <laughs> Literally, I have... Yeah, I mean, that's what this game does. It does, yeah. It brings out the worst of us. <laughs> uh, right, what did other people say? Oh, two out of ten. That's nice. <laughs> two out of ten reasons mentioned above, and I uh, misclicked on the poll. That's all right. <laughs> it said loved it instead of God help me. <laughs> that's an unfortunate mistake, Roberto. Uh Give a Definitely Hallows Part 1 in the bike with Hagrid feel 0 out of 10. <laughs> Literally couldn't have put it better, although that's actually more fun than this level, if I'm honest. Uh, that, there you go, Definitely Hallows is beating this at something. Um, John gave it a 1 out of 10, so much potential, not executed. God, you lot are being nice and generous to this level. Bob's, <laughs> yeah, I forgot about the weird controls, 1 out of 10. Jesus, you guys are being nice. Right, well, I guess we're going to have to give our uh, scores. So, Phil, off you go. Yeah, I don't know. One, it's like, ugh. Yeah, it's not good. I still like how some of it looks. I think I like the bit when you're a bit more under... Not underground, because you're underwater, but... Some of it when you're like going through some of the old castly bits or whatever they were. Hmm. That can look okay. Um but it's yeah, it's not good gameplay at all. Mm -hmm. So a solid one. Okay. I guess. It's just when I think about it, the ones that I gave three, like mm -hmm. would I go back and play the Forbidden Forest one? Yeah, probably I'd give it another go. There's just I don't want to do this one again at all. There's no point. Like <laughs> there's just nothing. <laughs> there's no redeeming things really about this level no 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 so from my perspective here 
And people might think I'm being a bit harsh with this one. Maybe not. Minus 10? What? <laughs> no, <Nah>, not quite. <laughs> we can't go that low. I'd love to go that low, but we can't. Um, this, you got to understand, is purely from a game design perspective here. Because if I'm honest, this level is so, so badly designed... It's just not even forgivable, even with the visuals looking quite neat in places. I can't forgive it. It's a terribly designed level. And quite frankly, this should not have been like in the final product. This is unacceptable, in my opinion, actually, as a level. So, yeah, it gets a 0 out of 10. It's an Ooh. absolute disaster of a level. I hate playing it. It, every time I play it, I'm just reminded of just how badly designed it is. And it's a shame because this level really could have been brilliant. It has potential to be something fantastic. And to be honest with you, if they'd gone with the open world idea, like I had mentioned before, this level could have been, you know, something quite special. I actually think it could have beaten the dragon task, to be honest. But, you know, they didn't. And to be honest with you, it feels like they just didn't really try with this level, actually. It really does. And that's so sad to have to say that, but it just feels that way. I mean, the artists obviously had a cool design idea here, which is good on them. But everything else, it's like everyone just gave up. <laughs> it's like they just saw what was happening with the game product and went, is there a point anymore? <laughs> <laughs> why do we bother and just to put it in perspective yes I would rather play the Forbidden Forest level than this level seriously yeah. it's actually I hate the Forbidden Forest level yeah but it's so much more bearable to play than this and it's actually got some kind of decent design to it Forbidden Forest this has just got nothing this is just a disaster a real disaster <laughs> So, yeah, there you go. Zero out of ten. The first one in the whole of this uh, Goblet of Fire series. Wow. I can't believe you gave it a one, to be honest. <laughs> I think that's being nice. <laughs> well, it's just, is it better or worse than the the Pixie Encounter? That's what I, you know, that's what I compare everything to. Honestly, Actually, it's, it's, it's probably, just least, as bad. <laughs> at least there's a tiny bit of variation here, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah it's not a good variation though is it <laughs> here's the thing though like i even the pixie encounter i honestly could tolerate more than this level like the design of the pixie level is bad yeah but this is a whole new level of just terrible <laughs> Yeah. This is something that shouldn't exist. I mean, neither should the pixie thing, but this really shouldn't exist. <laughs> and what's worse is the pixie encounter is a bonus thing, right? It's just a bonus level for fun. This mm. is a main part of the story. This is a main bloody level, man. <laughs> this is one of the Triwizard challenges. And this reduced to... Nothing. <laughs> yeah. This is serious stuff right here. Like, you could score every other freaking level terrible. Also, while we're on this topic, why is Harry wearing glasses underwater? <laughs> I never thought of that. You're so right. He doesn't wear them in the film. <laughs> no. Why is he wearing them underwater? Well, they're <laughs> wearing their, their home clothes to all their lessons, so we can't delve too deep into this. I can, the whole I can, starts unraveling. No, I can question this one a bit because he wouldn't be able to see a thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is bad, man. Get it off my screen, uh, right? Um, anyway, never reach this far. <laughs> Not worth it. Don't do it. Uh, you call yourself a noob, to be honest. I call you uh, a a god, a genius, for not making it this far. <laughs> you did the right thing. I think playing this level takes more time than reading this section in the book. <laughs> yeah, you're probably not wrong. <laughs> Zero out of ten, indeed. Instead of taking Giddyweed in this game, Harry... Actually, that's another point. Giddyweed. You go and get it in Hobology, right? And in the cutscene, it doesn't even show Harry taking it. It doesn't even explain that he's taking it. So, just very true. Yeah. See, I'm just bringing up more negativity for this level. It's like never ending. 
<laughs> okay, right. Uh, let's go through the poll quick, and then we'll move on to yep. a much more bearable level. <laughs> okay, what have we got? Poll. 9% said they love it. Don't know how, but fair enough. Um, they love it. 45% said it's average. I think that's being very, very nice, but fair enough. And then 45% said, God help me. Now that's where it's at. <laughs> oh, this is a level that I feel would make people uninstall the game. Seriously, <laughs> that's how bad it is. Okay, right. Well, anyway, that's the end of that poll. That's the end of this level. Let's uh, get Phil to talk about some crazy stuff while I get the uh, maze task. Cool. It was interesting that you're saying about how it could be, you know, free roaming underwater level. Mm. But I genuinely don't know whether I... I don't think I trust them to make an underwater open world level, to be fair. <laughs> I, I have no faith that they would pull it off successfully. It'd like, probably just be empty space with these devs. Yeah, right. Yeah, probably. Um, but I think if you gave it to someone like Gnome Wonder, for example, if Gnome Wonder had actually made this game, I think it would have actually been quite good. Um, and yeah, I feel like they could have done a good job. I just, mm. I mean, Goblet of Fire, in truthful honesty for everyone here, is a rushed game 101 example yeah. of how to rush your game and really not do a good job of rushing it either <laughs> this is it yeah, in a this, nutshell this level's just such a easy an easy thing to just plop in like yeah on rails thing i wouldn't call it easy to plop in but it definitely well, I mean, like they don't have to develop a whole massive open mm. open water bit mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing as in, like, as you know, it's a tried and tested, yeah, yeah, licensed game kind of style thing. Yeah, but yes, that's it's almost off my screen. I'm very excited for it to disappear. <laughs> I could just close my eyes, to be fair, but um, it's nearly gone. Give it a second; it'll be gone. <laughs> I, I want it to go more than you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, there we go. That should be up now. E yes, it is. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly read the Ooh. chat briefly before I pop over to the next one, which is the maze task, by the way. If you want to vote for that, then the poll is ready for you all. Uh, so what we got here, Farron? You know what? I wonder if anyone has ever interviewed the EA Games guys who actually made these games. To be honest with you, it would be nice to actually talk to the devs who made the later Harry Potter games because it's all from the same studio who is actually the studio that's like literally 20 minutes drive away from where I live. But yeah, um, EA Guildford made them all. And to be fair to them, they I, I don't want to make this clear. They made The Prisoner of Azkaban for PS2, which is my second most favorite Harry Potter game of all time. They made an incredible game there. And to be honest with you, The Order of the Phoenix is not that awful either. I feel like really with a lot of these later on Harry Potter games, they just got rushed to hell with them. So they just came out very badly, which is sad. Because, you mm -hmm. know, from Prisoner of Azkaban, I could tell that they actually, you know, they know what they're doing. <laughs> they know how to make games. So it's a shame. But... Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to talk to some of the devs, actually. Although, I have, technically speaking, spoken to one. But, yeah, that's besides the point. <laughs> um, a 2 out of 10. There are some good ideas behind, but they could not manage to do it well. Yeah, I agree, the execution is terrible. But the ideas here are somewhat reasonable in places, yeah. Uh, Lego Harry Potter Goblet of Fire had a great late taste. Uh, late taste? Late task part. Yep, I agree, Justin, it did. Good point, Alex. I wonder, uh, I wish no wonder could have made their own versions of all the Harry Potter games. Yeah, I agree with that. It would be good. Uh, probably the game is rushed and they could not handle the job. I don't know if it's really them handling the job. I think it's more that they just rushed. They didn't have time. <laughs> That's literally all there is to it. Um, they could probably handle it, though. But yeah. Uh, right. So, Lake Task is a Gonna. Bye. Hello, Maze Task. 
Woo-woo. And if you think it's an improvement, not by much. Right. <laughs> okay. Let's go. So, how useful is this level? It, again, carries on the plot. It also changes up the plot a little bit here. Um, and it's intriguing, really, because, of course, the thing that they seem to have done with this game, which is strange, is they introduce Mad-Eye Moody at the beginning of the game. But then, when it gets to the point where he's actually kind of important later on in like the story, he's just absent. So, like, the whole thing here, they do explain that Mad-Eye Moody hit, you know, the... Um, try was a uh, what am I on about hit the cup even inside the maze but you know there's nothing more to him after that or anything like that which is odd so mm. yeah it, it's odd because he is one of the most if not the most important character in Copper Fire to be honest uh, but yeah I mean I'll get more into that later but still it's strange um yeah, other than that, I guess the plot works here. It does what it needs to, but it doesn't do it brilliantly. It, it's very, very vague, actually, to be honest, with the plot of this level, in my opinion. Also, there's a whole extra special bit at the end with Cedric getting trapped in a bush and two yeah. giant ass fire crab creatures. I think they're called scoops or something. Yeah, um, the blast ended scoot. Yeah, they... See, you know all the names. How do you know this? <laughs> I, know, I, just, I just remember. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I think you play this game secretly a lot in uh, in the background without telling us. Yeah, I play, but, I play it on my PSP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think it's just... A bit of a weird addition, but hey, fair enough. Um, you've got to make the maze task interesting in some way, I suppose. Although, I would have quite liked to have had a thing where we were hunted down by Victor Crumb in this. I think that would have been cool. And especially as they actually bothered to model his character in this level. He's there so mm -hmm. briefly that it just would have been nice to have seen him. Also, on that note, they did model Fleur's model in this game. But... She is only used model-wise in a card, <laughs> and that is it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess she was not important at all, uh, according to the tips. <laughs> all right, well, um, yeah, how fun is this level? To be honest with you, not very. I was actually very bored with this level. I didn't find it interesting, which is a shame, because... Honestly, a puzzle like this where you kind of have to use your brain to think of what to go around and things, which, by the way, they executed the maze pretty well here. You know, it is a maze. It's just a shame that I just find it really boring. There's nothing here to make it interesting. It's just... It's there! It's something that you play and that's about it, really. Shame. Um, how difficult is the level? Not at all. There's literally no difficulty, in my opinion, in this level. Even the end bit is pretty reasonable. I mean, it has its difficulties, I suppose, at the end with the big scoops. But nothing groundbreakingly challenging. You've dealt with enough of them throughout the rest of the game at this point. <laughs> uh, visuals. It's very green. It's a, it's a bit of a Again. trend trend with this game, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's very green, but to be fair, this is a level where I expect it to be green because it's in a hedge maze, so fair enough. Um, yeah, I think visually, you know, they captured the hedge design pretty well, actually. The hedge looks good here. It doesn't look really awful or anything. It looks reasonable. So, yeah, credit to the devs here. I think they did all right with that. But I think it could have been nice to have seen a little bit more visual inside the level. The shameful thing is that most of the camera is just focused on the maze. You can't see above the maze very often, which is sad. <laughs> it would have been nice to kind of, in my opinion, give the player that sort of hopeless feeling, like they were lost in the maze when the outside world is sort of very happy and lively. Uh, we didn't get that here, in my opinion. It's just very much... Here's a green hedged maze for you. <laughs> You're going to stay in it now. <laughs> That's about it, really. Uh, Audio-wise, to be honest, the only audio I remember is the very end bit here where you fight these scoops. And it's just the audio from previous levels, fighting audio, and that's literally it. Other than that, 
I couldn't tell you anything about the audio in this level because I can't remember. And I played this level recently and more than I would like, and I still can't remember. So, yeah, uh, I'll pass it on to Phil. Wow. Um, yeah, I think I agree with most of that plot-wise. Technically does it, but we kind of don't get a lot. I feel like they wasted a lot of potential in the maze, actually, because it's, yeah, like, split into those three sections where the first one is just walking around and, like, literally nothing happens, really, which is a shame. I don't know. It, I mean, not so much happened in the film, but the book had a bit more going on. But um, I agree with the whole Victor Crumb thing, actually. That would have been a nice thing that they could have done. Um, for this, was it challenging or difficult? Not really. Going around the maze, you know, is as challenging as a maze is. So I found it kind of a bit of a struggle, I guess. It was very maze-like, we'll put it that way. Um, <clears throat> the running bit maybe felt a bit stressful. I can't really remember how I felt at the time, but I don't know how easy it would have been to die, to be fair. And then two blast-ended scroots. Ooh, like, I guess... At this point, having two is probably not really much of a challenge. Plus, you've got a lot of space. And then, was it fun or interesting? It was alright. It was nice to be in the maze. Like, but that's just the novelty of it, really. Um, and I agree what you said about the actual... Like, the hedges do look like hedges, which is good. And I like it when you get those shots a bit further out where you can, like, see... All of the maze in the distance which looks good it's just a shame it's not more like that to be honest um but the longer this level goes on the kind of the visuals do kind of get worse like the second part is okay but you're just kind of running and then the last part is just a bit weird yeah that's kind of it really isn't it it's not a lot to it to be honest even though this this one's got three sections none of them really have a lot to them well, they kind of all blend into one, in my opinion. Just yeah. nothing particularly special about each one to me. No, yeah. Uh, I could say very differently about the dragon task, you see, but here, it's just not the case. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. I, I think a lot of people seem to... Um, yeah, let's like just all say. you do is all you do is you walk through the maze, then you walk through a bit faster, and then you reach the end and have to cast a few spells. Mm. And actually, when I say it like that, it does make it seem so nothing, <laughs> which it is, I suppose. <laughs> it is, yeah, you're not wrong. Um, also, hello, Fedora, welcome to the stream. Um, I'm saying hi because you said hi to us, and you know. Phil should say hi as well. Say hi, Phil. Hello. I said hello in the chat. Oh, well, well say hi in real life. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, fair enough. Okay, so I guess it's score time. <gasps> score time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cedric might as well be me scoring this whole game where he just cast at Victor Crumb there. <laughs> uh, right, so scoring this level... Yeah, um, I think I'll be nice to this level and give it a nice 1 out of 10. <laughs> Ooh, so generous. I'm, I'm being nice. So, I know it sounds weird, isn't it? I'm being nice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think it can get a 1 simply because I do like the visuals of the hedge. And I'm being serious about this. I know it might sound like a comedy comment, but I'm being serious. The visuals of the hedge are actually really good here. But that's all I like about this level. Otherwise, I don't really want to play it. I hate playing it. It's just very boring. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 1 out of 10. Wow. Uh, I'm going to give it 2 out of 10 because I gave the previous level 1 and it was ever so slightly better than that. So, it's got slightly more variety. But I, it's not really like... It's not a fun level. There's not you don't do much, like if yeah for with these two, it feels like they were like oh no we have to do a level for this thing because it's like 
part mm. of the plot instead of being like, okay, this is an important part of the plot, so maybe we should make them into the important parts of the game. It felt like they almost did it the opposite way around and they drew out these bits where they... I don't know. They probably... I imagine what they did was they had a checklist where they were like, okay, let's think of the different environments we can do for big levels. And they were like... People liked the, the plants one. People mm -hmm. like castle one and then at the end they were like oh no now we have to also do ones that have something to do with the plot <laughs> so. yeah pretty much um, i do want to actually add for this level that if you've played this level in the lego harry potter game they actually did this level way better and in particular one thing that they do in that that really pleases me is that they include a lot more stuff from the book which, you know, they include stuff like the Sphinx statue blocking yeah, the path and that. They also include the spider that was inside the book and things as well. And the nice thing about that too is they include the fact that there's like a bit at the beginning of that where the hedge has sort of a mist to it where it's difficult to see where you're going and every time you go through it you appear in like another area that you've already been to and stuff like that. Um which is in the book <laughs> and actually makes that just a lot more interesting whereas of course they didn't do that in the film and these devs have literally based this whole level off of the film and there's nothing in the film pretty much for this at all really mm -hmm. so yeah i mean you yeah, kind like of been, even just creatures throughout <laughs> the first section would have been more interesting it still wouldn't have made it... i don't think it would have it wouldn't have um completely rescued it but at least it would be a bit closer to the book and make it ever so slightly more interesting honestly they should have just basically said to ea piss off when it comes to only doing stuff from the film they should yeah. have actually done some creativeness of getting stuff from the book as well here or even better do their own creative right, styles yeah. like you know that's the whole point of game design you've got to be creative and if you have a publisher just coming along going, no, don't be creative. That's not what games are about. We need them to be just like what the film is, which was created in a very different style because it's a film. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to copy that. You know, it just it shows in the end product of a game. You've got to remember that a film and a game are very different creatures here. <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean, you know... The Lego game basically said, stuff that, we're doing it via the book, and do you know what? Credit to them. It's a lot better as a result of it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm annoyed that they didn't get this level to be that interesting, because it could have been great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the whole of this game in a nutshell, but this level is a main level, damn it. <laughs> the main levels should not be getting worse scores than the side levels. This is not good. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, well. there's my rant slightly uh, out the side for a minute. Oh, boy. I I promise, I, I do feel some kind of love at points in this game. <laughs> uh, right, what have we got here? What have we got? I need to see what people have scored this. Uh, right. I give this level bush out of ten. Not Correct. bad. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hang on a minute. Fedora just said, "Not gonna lie, this is the best HP game so far." Hoo, hoo, hoo. I think you might be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roberto, four out of ten because it has me wishing. <laughs> <laughs> wishing so much more yeah I mean fair enough that's what I want but I like some of the elements of it at least back when I was younger see you can't keep re you know, comparing it to when you were younger compare it to now <laughs> compare it to who you are now <laughs> be brutal like me <laughs> uh, you have a good point there in the movie they completely left out some of the cool unique elements like the Sphinx yeah it's true <laughs> um, I give it a 4 out of 10 mentioned I found it so so as a level yeah fair enough mm. uh, really they should have based the games more off the books they should have done like they did like no wonder did that's what they should have done <laughs> uh, so yeah I agree I agree I definitely agree. 
uh, <laughs> he's under the Imperius curse. <laughs> nah, in this game, he's under the development curse. Anyway, <laughs> um, the poll results. We've got 17% love it. Interesting. 50% said, yeah, okay. Eh. Uh, and then 33% it sucks and it's boring. I expected more people to be on the boring side, to be honest, but you know what? Fair enough. It's a middle ground, this level. Yeah. I'm surprised. I don't know. I guess, yeah, it's nice that it's in the maze, I guess. <laughs> That's not a redeeming factor, damn it. <laughs> you That's just a be... requirement for the level, really. You shouldn't be using this as an excuse. <laughs> hey, I'm uh... not the one who gave it uh... A good score, so I'm just trying to True. think. <laughs> anyway. Stop trying to defend the level, man. <laughs> uh, right, so uh, I guess while I create the poll for the next one, we'll uh, let you talk about hedges. <laughs> I it don't is. know. <laughs> um, someone explain why... Um, I forgot what was... What's his name? Cedric Diggory. Someone explain why he's being crucified in this level. Doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> but uh, I love how this level ends where they grab it and then it just cuts straight to the, uh, the like, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, literally. <laughs> it's such an awkward way to end it as well because it's just like, take it. No. <laughs> oh. It's like, okay. but <laughs> should we just take it together then? Yes. <laughs> and then it just goes, congratulations, you've got a gold. <laughs> Like, but what about the story? <laughs> oh, oh well. mate. Anyway, I would give this level a hedge, hedge, hedge out of ten. Deserves its hedges. <laughs> okay, we're on to Voldemort next. We are. That'll be better. Poll is nearly ready. It actually it's two. Voldemort. Voldemort, Voldemort. There we go. Here we are. Here we are. Wait for it, and the poll will go live. There it is. The Voldemort poll is now live. You guys can go vote for your Voldemorts. Off you go. Wow. Here we are. The Voldemort level. It's not like you've already seen it, but here you go. <laughs> your first film. Cool. Okay. Usefulness plot-wise, it is the plot. <laughs> Good. Although they don't really. They don't really, like, show Voldemort coming from the cauldron or any of that. So, like, is it actually useful in terms of, te of like, teaching us or telling us the plot? I guess not really. It's more just like, oh, now Voldemort's here. Which, to be fair, whatever. I don't know. Like, I'm sure people, maybe that's what some people thought happened. Some bad guy's just there. Fine, sure. <laughs> um... And of, yeah, so that's kind of it in terms of usefulness. We have the plot. Interestingly, I don't think we really use any of the spells that we've learned throughout the game on Voldemort, really. There's, I don't think so, anyway. You kind of just no. attack skeletons. No. And <laughs> stuff, which is kind of a shame, but also I don't know if I... Uh, I don't think um, Aqua Erupto, or whatever it's called, would actually be very useful on him. So. Herbificus on Voldemort. Make Herbificus, him grow yeah. a bit taller. <laughs> Um, was it challenging or difficult? I think it felt a bit challenging in part. So when it's just you versus the skeletons, that's not that difficult. You know, you can move back and shoot them. And yeah, sometimes they appear off camera. Whether that's just a flaw with the game or that was on purpose, we'll never know. But, um, and then, because it's kind of, there's three stages to the fight, right? Like, there's a bit where you're just attacking the skeletons. Then there's a bit where you do the whole spell thing with Voldemort. And attacks on more skeletons. And then there's the bit where he picks up the big angel statue. And you still have to do the spell thing, but also avoid that. And attack more skeletons. So, yeah. The first part, not that difficult. The second part, kind of a bit difficult. Because it's a bit difficult to control. Which is, like, a kind of nice. Because at least it's a bit more realistic. Because why would you be able to control the spell that you're casting with Voldemort super well? And that was a bit 
challenging, I guess, because while you're busy trying to not die. Did you have to smash all the gravestones? I can't remember. I no, think I did. you don't. Is it just like a, you just do it for, for a certain fun. time? No, it's just fun. Just That's fun. all. That's this year. It's just for fun. It's basically cool. if you're a person who hates people having a grave, then you can just break it for fun, you know. And Harry Potter hates people with graves. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I think I vaguely remember that this. Yeah, the bit, the second bit being a little bit difficult because you got some skeletons, but at least they're very easy to defeat now. And then the third bit with this angel statue, I think again was a bit more challenging because you've got to like avoid that as well and then he just dies not dies obviously but like i can't remember exactly how it ends voldemort just gives up something like that yeah mm. i'd say this for a final boss battle it feels a bit strange it's not super difficult mm. but you're not like fighting him directly but i mean i guess they have to go with the story right but mm -hmm. i don't know a bit strange um, is it fun or interesting? I think it was pretty fun, if it, even if it didn't really go anywhere. Like, it kind of went a bit. We've got this same angle for, like, the whole of it, which is just not great. It's a bit boring. Like, he's just standing over there for almost all of it. He could be moving around a little bit, but no. Um, I still remember finding it reasonably fun, though. Like, I don't remember <clears throat> hating it. It's not a great boss battle, but it's not It's not awful. Like, at least you have to actually do stuff. Like, you have to move out of the way of that and defeat the skeletons. And presentation-wise, I quite like it, even though it's green again. <laughs> at, um, I still kind of like it a bit. I'm trying to think of why. Uh, there's some nice... Like, the gravestones are pretty nice. And to be fair, this is kind of what it looks like in the film, so they kind of had to stick with it, I guess. But it's nice with the house in the background and all the gravestones, and the spell looks pretty cool. Um, and I think the music was pretty, you know, big Final Battle style music. Maybe not super duper impressive, but I'm trying to remember. Oh no, there was like, yeah, big choruses and stuff. Mm. And Voldemort actually looks pretty good, even with his weird faces. He still looks pretty good. Uh, which which I, I like because he's a very important character. It's just a shame they put all their energy into this one last battle, but whatever. Um, some weird some weird camera angles on the cutscenes with him, though, I will say. But generally, I think it looks pretty good. And it looks how, if any level should have been green and creepy, this was the one because it's the Voldemort one. Like, I think... So yeah, overall, I like it. I don't think it's amazing, but I think it's like solid. I don't know. Like they could have done more with it, but at least they didn't completely mess it up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know. Well, I feel um, like you probably will like it less. I I think to put this bluntly for everyone to hear this. You're not ready for what I'm about to lay out into this level. <laughs> you are not ready for how much crap I'm going to give this thing. <laughs> okay. All right, where to start? Let's start off with the plot, I suppose. Why not? <laughs> okay. So the plot of this level, fair play to it. It's at least following what it kind of needs to from the film. The most important bit is the fact that Voldemort has come back to life again, properly in a body, and is now basically trying to kill Harry. So yes, fair enough. They got that right. Good on them. Why they didn't bother showing Cedric dying is a bit beyond me. I guess it was just not okay in this game, or maybe they just couldn't be asked to put it in. Probably more that. Uh, they did put his ghost in, though. They could be asked to do that. <laughs> uh, they also didn't even show Voldemort being created. So, again, if you are someone who has not read the book or seen <laughs> the film, then you're probably going to question why he all of a sudden exists. But whatever, you know, fine. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much the plot. Also, the ending. Hang on. No, no, no. That is not it for the plot. Hang on a minute. The end bit, when Harry escapes, 
and uh you know that that's all great and dandy and all that crap where is the rest of the plot with mad eye moody being evil and body crouch jr and the fact that he is the entire sole reason for why voldemort was able to get harry in the first place and actually come back to life <laughs> i mean it's a pretty massive plot point if i'm honest <laughs> and it's just completely not there Instead, it sort of just ends with, by the way, this kid who you barely see in this game died. <laughs> and that's about it, really. There you go. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Although I do like the fact that the ending cutscene does show Harry sitting there looking depressed as hell at the fact that he actually got through the whole of this game. Um, <laughs> and he's in front of the waterfall on one of the best levels in the game <laughs> just thought I'd point that one out but anyway, yeah there you go so uh, level overall it, it gets the plot across in some way I guess, just not very well in my opinion how fun is this level? oh boy <laughs> okay so to start off with this level actually is quite fun I like the whole being able to just run around the graveyard attacking skeletons it's fun it's actually okay it's interesting there's combat against an enemy type here that's actually quite difficult to kill unless you pick them up and throw them of course but otherwise it's quite difficult to kill them you know it adds a challenge i like it it's good it makes it feel like it should then voldemort and harry lock on to each other with the spells and the whole level instantly goes to shit <laughs> literal shit <laughs> i have never in my entire history of playing a game seen a game that has put the movement of your character on the same control scheme as the movement of the locked spell whoever came up with that should never be allowed to design controls in a game ever again. That is possibly the biggest crime in the whole of this game, actually. It's stupid. It's terrible. And it's horrendous to have to play with. And it ruins what is actually a promising level. It ruins it a lot because the control is just... It's abysmal, man. You get all these skeletons coming up afterwards and you've got to try and kill them all while trying to move Harry and this stupid spell thing that when it hits you, it stuns you. All I can say is thank Christ they made it so that if the spell hits you, it doesn't make you lose health because God almighty, you'd be screwed. <laughs> it's just like, it's bad, man. It's bad. It ruins the level big time. And it's a shame because the whole statue flying around and being thrown at you and that is actually a really cool idea. Something that's not in the film, of course, and so on. But it's a cool idea. I liked it and I thought it was something promising. But it's ruined by a crap control scheme. And it's bad. And it just ruins pretty much all the level. So there's like a quarter of this level that's good. Okay, so that's that for the fun perspective. How difficult is it? The level is pretty difficult in my opinion when it comes to that control scheme. The rest of it, not so bad. But the control scheme literally is just terrible. So yeah, awful stuff right there. Awful. Um, I guess really the other difficulty I suppose is the skeletons. They are a challenge if you just cast like your normal jinx spells at them. But if you pick them up and throw them then of course they die quite quickly. So... Yeah, it depends how you do it. I personally like to just jinx them just because it makes the level feel a bit more worthwhile to play and a bit more lengthy. So, yeah, I preferred that. <laughs> but either way, yeah, that's about the only challenge to this level. It also annoys me that there's no point in the level where you can actually properly have a fight with Voldemort. As Phil mentioned earlier, Voldemort just stands there. It's just standing there. It does nothing. <laughs> like, he could actually be fighting with Harry here. You could have had a really cool proper fight here where you could hide behind the gravestones and probably fight and cast spells at one another. But it's not there. It's just completely not there. And the camera is always stuck in one position for the whole of the level. And it's just very stupid and boring that they do that. They could have done something really special with this and they completely wasted the whole opportunity. So 
to be honest with you, that just pisses me off more than anything. <laughs> it just pisses me off. Also, while we're at the whole point of this, Voldemort is massive, man. Have you seen the size of this guy? He looks like he's nine foot five or something. <laughs> he's absolutely gigantic. He's bigger than the statue that he throws at you. It's insane. Why is he so big? That's true, actually. He <laughs> he's is, huge. Yeah. He is bigger than the statue. <laughs> he's massive. <laughs> Look, Harry's not even the size of the gravestones. <laughs> Look at Voldemort, he's freaking massive. I don't remember him being this big. Like, what, when he goes through any corridor in Hogwarts, he just has to crouch every time. He's like, oh, sorry, hang on a minute. <laughs> it's nuts. I don't know why he's so big. I feel like they might not quite have figured out what his model was meant to look like yet. <laughs> um, visually, as Phil said, it's green and um, Boy, is it green, all right. <laughs> it's green with some grey. And to be fair, it makes sense given the environment. Again, Phil mentioned that, which is true. It is true. Although, I think it could have been a bit more grey, if I'm honest. I wanted yeah. more grey here because it's a graveyard, you know. It's a horrible place, effectively, in this like level point of view. So... It would have been interesting to have seen that. Also, I would have quite liked to have seen some more like foggy smoke around the level in places like you could have had the Death Eaters, for example, standing around different parts of the graveyard in the level rather than just all behind Voldemort. Um, would have made it feel a bit more intimidating and interesting. It's just there's a lot of stuff they could have done with the visuals here that they didn't do. I will say that the statue that Voldemort flings at you looks visually cool. The general graveyard itself actually looks quite nice, so I'll give them that too. Good stuff. Also visually here, I love the fact that you can explode all the gravestones in the graveyard. I love the fact that you can do that damage. Even though you don't need to, it's just kind of nice to have it there. It makes it feel a bit more realistic that this spell that you are currently locked on with actually could damage and kill something even though it doesn't hurt harry which is a bit unrealistic but whatever the point is it's still able to do stuff like that and i like that so good stuff good stuff uh audio wise i like the audio at this level it's epic it makes you feel epic at all times you know it's meant to be epic it's a final boss fight against Voldemort for christ's sake if it wasn't epic i'd be very worried <laughs> so yeah they did well at that uh, one other thing in regards to the audio, which I'm actually going to put the audio on on this, and hopefully everyone will be able to hear it. Um, there's this part at the beginning with uh, <laughs> a Death Eater who says the Varga Cadabra, but says it in the most hilarious manner I've ever heard. Phil, you might not even remember this. Here you go, everyone. Oh, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to hear it because I'm on... True, true, you won't hear it. But yeah, Everyone else can have a hear. Anyway... Here you go, everyone. Listen to the way this character, the Death Eater in this case, says Avago Cadabra. Here we go. Kill the spare. No! Avago Cadabra! That gets me every single time because it's just the worst voice acting I think I've ever heard. Anyway, <laughs> that concludes my thoughts. <laughs> wow. Like I said, very positive. I was going to tear into this level, and I mean it. <laughs> Cool. All right. So, uh, what's the what's the chat uh, view on this lovely level? <laughs> um, not a lot of talking about the level. To be fair, mm. more about um, so about some other scenes, waterfalls. <laughs> Chip's got the idea. So is Pete with the Avaga Kedavra. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad, man. It's like the worst voice acting I think I've heard in a long time. It's bad. Uh, John gave it a three out of ten. More wasted potential. I agree. Are they casting Aquarupto? Might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> um, it seriously looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> I could literally hear this voice in my head. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will give it a Varga Catal for out of 10. <laughs> it's literally a meme. Best, bro. It's a meme. It is actually a meme. Uh, what did Robo so say here? So the waterfalls, in the end, we have pictures of the trio on location there on various cards yeah 
and they look very young and Prisoner of Azkaban error-ish even. These scenes don't feature in the movie. No, they don't. But thank God we have the waterfall bit at the end of the game because it makes the player realise just how they actually feel at the end of the game <laughs> for playing it. Um, I think I want to give it a question mark out of 10. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Interesting. 3 out of 10 from Roberto. Fun action bits, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, uh, yeah I've seen those, I think. Yeah. Uh, Zero out of ten from Mert. Oh. This is just disappointing. I bet they made this level in a day. <laughs> and there are no beans. Oh, hey. To be honest, I think Mert might not be wrong. <laughs> uh, right, so I guess it's time for oh. Phil to rate it. Go on, Phil. I'm going to give it a four. Because I, I enjoyed it, but... It's there's not it's it's just not really like a good boss battle. Like it's I feel like for Voldemort, I feel like we should have something else. Like he should be walking around because none of the threat is really from Voldemort until the angel statue at the end. The rest is just from these random skeletons <laughs> that are walking around. Mm. I don't know. I didn't I I had a good time, but I didn't. I had a good well, time, but I didn't. <laughs> Just leave it there. It's like I wouldn't want to like play it again, but like <laughs> I enjoyed it at the time. Hmm. Yeah. Should have just left it there. I enjoyed it, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Nutshell. Go but a fire. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what do I rate this level? I feel bad in some ways for giving it such a high score. Actually, uh, I'm giving it a one out of ten. Um, Come on. No, I'm being serious. <laughs> this deserves it. The controls in this are abysmal. And this... I, d I don't mind the controls. They're awful. I think it's kind of the point. That's, I don't want it to be the point. You can do a much better job with it if you <laughs> don't make the controls crap. Also, I might add that this is not an epic final boss battle. No, it's, it it's just not. isn't. It, it doesn't feel like I'm actually fighting the boss, Voldemort. It feels like I'm fighting everything else other than him. Which defeats the point of it being called Voldemort. You might as well call the level <laughs> skeletons and the freaking statue. <laughs> Literally, it's That's got nothing true. to do with him. So, yeah, in all honesty, I think it gets a one. But the only reason I give it a one is because it visually looks quite nice. Um, and I guess the bit at the beginning where you fight the skeletons is actually quite satisfying. So I will give it that. I wish, I honestly want to give it a higher score. I do. But it's just got so much wrong with it. <laughs> it's just, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm looking at it from a game design perspective here, and it doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you also haven't been back to replay it, so... <laughs> That's very true. If and neither did, do I wish to. If you did, you might change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I want to see what everyone else has rated this masterpiece. <laughs> also, the facial expressions of Voldemort peak um, that's why i gave it such a high score actually oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh dear the controls are, ch <laughs> are trying to make it feel like it's out of your control that's yeah i i get that but it's not a good thing <laughs> you shouldn't really have to design a level like that to make it a challenge you could do a lot better than that you don't see crush bandicoot for example going here have some shit controls just to make it difficult they actually make the levels challenging it's a very different situation <laughs> that's game level designed a bit more sensibly shall we say that's just an example i'm sure there are plenty of others <laughs> um Overall, I would give this game a 4 out of 10. By the way, we're not done yet, Mert. We've got two more stuff, uh, bits to cover even. Uh, roof level and bathroom levels are actually very good, but other levels are bad design. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> uh, a perfect way to summarise this game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, so what does the poll say? 8% amazing. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one. 33% uh, it's all right. Phil, you're in there. <laughs> yeah. And then 58% it's total crap. Yeah. Oh. I win again. 
<laughs> Thank you for agreeing with me. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good thing. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one that feels this way. Yeah. Uh, nostalgia makes this game bearable. <sighs> not for me. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, so, come up with an interesting fact, I guess, about spell locks or statues or graveyards or something, and I'll get the Mad Eye Moody thing set up. Hmm. Trying to think of it. Something about graveyards or something. <laughs> um. Did. Did. I feel like J.K. Rowling got a bunch of names from a graveyard somewhere. Uh. Harry Potter names. Graveyard. It was maybe from the Necropolis in Edinburgh. Is that Edinburgh? Necropolis. Or was that in Glasgow? Oh, I can't remember anymore. No, that was in Glasgow. Where did she write this? Oh no, she she was in Edinburgh, right? Lovely. Oh, 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 um. oh no, yeah, she, she got them from a graveyard in the heart of Edinburgh's old town. <clears throat> or did she? I'm trying to see if there's any specific examples. Um. I like this. Another iconic location, Victoria Street in Edinburgh, gave her the idea for Diagon Alley, but not the name, apparently. Just <clears throat> the street. Uh, Just the street. <laughs> Fair enough. Shops. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. There's a William McGonagall. There's a Mrs. Elizabeth Moody, where the name maybe came... Uh, Mad Eye Moody. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Well, um, the Mad Eye Moody stuff's all ready to go. Cool. I I probably won't really be able to say anything about this because I didn't really play them. So I'll let you. It's fair enough. I'll um I'm first anyway. But yeah. All right. Here we go, guys. The Mad Eye Moody challenges. So. Uh, I'm showing you PSP gameplay, by the way, of this one, because I never actually bothered to record this on the main game, because I couldn't be asked. So, here you go. Enjoy the PSP view of this game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're exactly the same, by the way, both versions. It's just one looks more awful graphically than the other. Uh, also, the AI is worse. But anyway, uh, Mad Eye Moody Challenges. So, <clears throat> my first point regarding these is why are these here when we could have had more dev time spent on the actual levels in the game you know to make them better why is this here a very good point. it's just a waste of time for this to exist it doesn't benefit the player really in any way whatsoever uh let's go through it via the points i guess how useful is this level it's completely pointless <laughs> Literally, there is no use for this at all. I think the only possible use I can see for it is the fact that they put some secrets in it that you can get in order to unlock the cards to help you for the secrets like in the game. That's it, otherwise it's completely worthless. Waste of your life, waste of time. Don't play them. Um, how fun is this level? They're not fun. They're challenges. You would have thought that the challenges might be somewhat entertaining, but they're not. They're just really quite boring. I mean, the only challenge out of these that I found remotely interesting, ironically enough, involves those little, well, not little, but the big blobby things that squirt pus everywhere, the bubba tubes or bubba pus things, whatever mm -hmm. they were called again, uh, where you fling them at targets outside on like the walls of the castle. That was actually quite fun. I'll give them that one. I enjoyed that. The rest of the challenges, nah, they're just not fun. They're not interesting. They're not worth your time. Um, they exist. That's pretty much the most that I can say for them. They exist. Also, I'd like to add that they involve the AI so much, these. And the AI is either going to be nice and cooperate with you, or it's going to effectively slap you in the face and say, I can't be asked." And usually it's the I can't be asked" part that the AI decides to go for with this. So, yeah, in all honesty, these are pretty awful because of the AI. 
<laughs> if you played this with real people, it would be a lot more bearable. I will just put that out there right away. Um, are these difficult? To be honest, if you're playing with the AI, yes. Yes, they are. Especially the first one with the dumb bogs, because you have to get a certain amount of, uh, I think it's Aberforth's spells, like shot at enemies, which doesn't sound horrendous. But when you're relying on the AI to actually take part in it, and it doesn't want to cooperate, and you're on a timer to try and get the best score, God help you, it's difficult. <laughs> it's not nice. Um, by the way, getting these rewards does nothing to help you, like they're bronze, silver, and gold. They're just there for the sake of it, just to make you feel good. Uh, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, other than that, oh, I mean, I guess it's not that difficult. They're just what they are. Uh, secrets. The secrets in this level are obviously in your face for the most part, except for the one you've just seen here, which is the vanishing card, which is actually well hidden. I'll give them that. So, congrats on that one, actually. But as for the other secrets, the dragon statues of the gargoyles, they're literally all around you. They're easy to see. Like, if you can't see them, then I think you need to go to Spec Savers, if I'm honest. But <laughs> yeah, um, they're pretty obvious. Uh, visually, it's very yellow, this level. It's a lot of yellow. <laughs> For once, it's not green. I know. Remarkable, right? Uh, yeah, I mean... I can't believe it. it. It it looks like Hogwarts. What more do you want, really? You're on top of one of the towers of Hogwarts. It stands out in a yellow fashion. And that's about it, really. It's nice that it's a daytime level, I guess, as well. Um, it would have been nice if we could have had different weather patterns while doing these challenges. That would have made it just a little bit more interesting, in my opinion, but no um audio i can't even remember done <laughs> all right phil wow. what do you have to say about the mad eye moody challenges um i think i played them a tiny bit i think i played them to see what they like were like um, they're pretty pointless, except I think I maybe used it to practice flinging the with the booba tubers because I found them a bit difficult to start off with, or I didn't really understand how you were supposed to do them. Mm. I think I I don't know if I just couldn't see the target, probably in the forest because you know it's the same color as everything else. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I maybe technically used it for that, and that was it. And besides that, pff, don't really remember a single thing about these. I think, yeah, I don't know. Maybe did them, I don't know when, probably after it said you could just try it and then didn't do them all because why would I want to waste my time with this? Mm. I mean, it's, it's true. It is true. Um, I guess I do have one more point, actually. And, I mean, it's not just specific to this. It's kind of the whole game in some ways but you see them a lot in this more because you have to do challenges that involve doing this and that's the general spell looks so the animations of the spells and things and actually i do have to say here that the devs absolutely aced it in my opinion with the visual effects of some of the spells they did a good job so like abaphors when you cast it does actually show you know, some of the birds coming out of the wands and attacking the enemy. Likewise, Aqua Raptor, of course, shows a giant waterfall, effectively, being splashed at enemies. Um, and then, of course, when you kill certain enemies, they turn into different creatures sometimes and explode in different ways and that. So it's quite cool how you can turn, uh, like, the... I think it's the... Is it the Earthlings or the Salamanders or something? Into the lapifors uh spell so like you can turn them into rabbits and they run around and then you can blow them up because uh, that's the brutality mm. of copper of fire i like that stuff and actually the visual design of the spells in this game is really good i wish that they were a bit more unique the spells and not just button mashing but i will give them credit that the visual design of them is very good so i suppose with this set of challenges here Whereas you're going to see a lot of the spells that you're probably not going to use as frequently throughout the game in this bit. It's nice to see them and they do look cool. So I will give the devs some credit there. So I thought I'd add that one in because we didn't, to be fair, talk about that at all, really, in any of the other levels. So there you go. Anything else to add, Phil? Sorry. <laughs> uh, 
No? <laughs> All right, cool. Um, yeah, I, I guess in this case, it's time to rate this thing. <laughs> uh, uh, the rating of this. How on earth am I going to rate this? <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, if you have to give it something. It's difficult, man. I think I'm going to give it a pointless out of 10. <laughs> I'm going to give it a, a boob achievers out of 10, personally. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. All right. That's well, a pointless out of 10 is what I've got here because it is pointless. <laughs> and I wish that, honestly, they spent the time just making the levels in the game better or even better. Put the cut level of, you know, the, uh, not Hobology, the, um, uh, care of magical creatures yeah. level in the game rather than make this it would have been much better but whatever uh, so yeah pointless out of 10 but if I was to give it an actual score out of 10 it would get a 1 just because at least there is something here <laughs> but that's about all it gets is the fact that it, there is something here yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah I, I think that's fair I just want to see what people uh, have rated this quickly uh, no yawning. <laughs> that is forbidden. Uh, what have we got here? So, what's your favourite spell? Mine is Accio, not Axio, by the way. Accio. They they said it wrong in this game. It's Accio. I don't know why they said it like that. It's Accio. <laughs> it really annoys me because sometimes I will accidentally make the error of saying Axio because of this damn game. <laughs> it really annoys me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, Roberto, I swear I haven't read Alex's scripts for his stream, even though we always bring up similar points. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, true. To be fair, in regards to the spell thing, I do have it written down somewhere, but it only just sort of slipped my mind that I haven't really mentioned it yet. So there you go. Uh, what can I say? Maybe you're just my AI in disguise, Roberto. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, Avaga Cadaver and Expelliarmus look identical in this game. Well, they're different colours. <laughs> they are different colours. Um, man, Accio is very useful. Yeah, it is. Uh, I give it an AI out of 10. <laughs> literally. It is literally an AI out of 10, this challenge. I give it a moody out of 10. Oh, that's a good one. Moody out of 10. That is a good one. I give it a face palm out of 10. I give it a yellow out of 10. Uh, come on, guys. The, <laughs> the challenges were quite fun and challenging. 5 out of 10 for real. Are you serious? Please tell me that's not real. <laughs> that's got to be a lie. Don't be serious, Roberto. <laughs> Don't lie to me. This is even the PSP version, and it's giving me trauma flashbacks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, uh, I thought it was weird you didn't give an actual number. <laughs> this last challenge is <laughs> Jenga out of 10. Uh, just did it because everybody else was. <laughs> Fair enough. Right, I want to see the polls. Oh, it's looking promising on my end again. 18% uh, said hell yeah, that they love it. That's too much. Um, Thirty-six percent said not really bothered. Fair enough. Most of them probably didn't play it. Uh, and then forty-five percent said, "Why is this here?" You're right. <laughs> why is this here? Why is it here? Why is it here? I I don't know why it's here. I wish I knew why it was here, but uh, I I don't know. I I can't answer that. I can't. It just doesn't make sense, man. I don't know. <laughs> It was added for the sake of being added, so why not? Okay, right. Well, while I create the final poll, um, I don't know really what you can talk about in regards to this. Talk about what you like, I guess. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what should have been in Mad Eye Moody's challenges. The real challenge here was playing through the whole game, so just put the whole thing in again. <laughs> uh, it's just yeah. the whole game within the challenge section of the game. Mm. We didn't really need a challenge section when we've already got the rest of it. 
<laughs> Literally. But anyway. Oh, goodbye, Chip Games. Oh, it's Chip going. Thanks for coming by, Chip. I appreciate it. We both do. Okay. So, here we go. The final thing to rate. Now, just for uh, context here, Phil has never played this before. If he ever wants to pop in when watching it on the stream and mention anything about what's being shown in the gameplay, then he's more than welcome to. But I'm going to be the one rating this pretty much on my own. So Phil probably won't be giving a score or anything for this one as I played this and he hasn't ever seen it. So these are something that most people don't know about. Because um, they're exclusive to the PSP version of this game. Which, by the way, is the same as the console version. Just missing the prefix bathroom level completely and has this in it instead. So uh, this is the mini games. Yeah. There are mini games in this. And I mean, to be fair, I am amazed it's not in the final main console game, this. <laughs> but whatever. This looks better than half of the rest of the game. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, only in the PSP version. There are four mini games that you get in total with this. So you get this one here that you're seeing, which is basically matching the cards in the time limit then you have a certain amount of attempts you can have doing it as well if you go over your attempts and you fail uh the second game is basically click on the card that's shown on the screen as quickly as you can the third mini game is defend the bulbs from dumb bulbs and then the final one is run around as the uh niffler i think i think it's a niffler anyway you run around with that on like a mini assault course around guess what the care of magical creatures area yeah, what? the one that was cut from the main console game. <laughs> so, yeah, that. Uh, so, yeah, enjoy the gameplay of the mini games for those of you that have never actually seen this before. But I'm going to rate this. I'm going to rate this in a slightly different way to how I've rated all the others because, of course, these are mini games. These are not actual main gameplay here of like a main level that you run through and so on. So, it's not really fair to compare it quite in the same way. But I will get my points across for this in a somewhat structured way, I suppose. Also, the dumb bob's on fire there because uh, it glitches out with a salamander card, just so you're aware. Same with that as well. Um, right, anyway. So, these mini games, they are kind of a bit of fun, as you can probably imagine. Usually, this is the sort of thing that you would probably play if you were like going on a plane or something. Granted, it's literally in a full, pretty much Goblet of Fire main game, just a PSP design and so on, which is alright, but yeah. Did I find these very fun when I was playing them? Yeah, to be honest, I actually did. I know, it sounds strange, doesn't it? But I thought these were quite entertaining. Um, to be fair, I didn't play this before I had played the Exploding Snap game, like it's a mini game in the uh, Order of the Phoenix and this one that you're seeing on the screen right here reminded me of that quite a bit. I mean, it's not obviously got the exploding to it, but it reminded me of it a little bit. And I actually enjoyed the exploding snap game, mini game thing from uh, Order of the Phoenix. I thought it was fun. So, yeah, this actually was quite entertaining for me. I enjoyed playing this mini game. It was good. It was also quite cool that each time, for the most part, when you completed getting the right sort of cards that, you know, match together, you got an interesting image or a little movie image of the creature that you're matching it with. I like that. I thought that was really neat. Um, something that they didn't have to do here, but, you know, it's cool. So good on them. And especially as this is a PSP port, I might add. <laughs> so good on them. Uh, yeah, it is fun. And the other mini games, of course, as well, where you've got to click on the card quickly or you've got to... Uh, defend the bulbs from the dumb bombs and stuff. That's also quite fun. Um, not really that. It's not the sort of thing that I want to keep playing multiple times. Let's put it that way. But it's at least there if I get bored effectively with the main game. Which is quite quickly. But, you know, besides the point, it is there. It's kind of fun. Um, the final one, though, is the most fun. 
and it's the one that easily is the mini games that I think everyone would go to play immediately out of all of them. And that's the Assault Course one around the Care of Magical Creatures cut level. And this is quite a cool level because you basically run around as a, I think it's a Niffler, you run around as that and you have to go through these hoops uh, in a certain time limit. Of course, you've got to complete this course in as well. And each time you can pick up little pieces of food for the creature to eat, which then speeds it up and so on. And yeah, there's just lots of obstacles to run around, jump over, stuff like that. And it's just kind of fun. And the environment design that they went with with Care Magical Creatures there looks really nice. It's a nice looking level. Um, I feel like it probably could have been even bigger and more expanded, of course, if we got the actual level. But, you know, it, it's cool that we got what we got there, at least in a mini game. So if you ever wanted to see the Care of Magical Creatures level at all in the console, main console kind of port form, then this is the closest you'll get to seeing it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, is this entertaining, these mini games overall? Yeah. I think they are. And really, I don't think there's a ton more to say in regards to them. But I will say that I will rate them quite highly, actually, because I enjoyed what I played with them. So, score wise for me, they get a nice. And I can't believe I'm giving mini games a higher score than certain levels in the actual main game here. This is a bit embarrassing, really. But yeah. I think these mini games get a solid 5 out of 10. I actually really enjoyed these when I played them. So, there you go. Any points you wanted to add at all, Phil? I'll skip forward to some of the other things as well so you guys can see them. I was going to say the other ones are probably more interesting then. Yeah. This is, yeah, this looks cool. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10. I've actually played them all secretly and they all get a 10, all of them. <laughs> But yeah. No, it's interesting that they had these extra mini games in. So there's the like bulb one. So basically here you've got Harry defending these bouncing bulbs um from the dumb bobs that kind of eat them. If you've ever played the PS1 Chamber of Secrets game, it's kind of a similar idea from the Hubology level in that, where you have to protect the mandrakes from being eaten by the slugs. It's kind of similar. <laughs> That's what they've gone for here, really, with a mini game. It's a neat mini game, and it's kind of cool. Uh, I did enjoy this one actually. I thought it was quite fun. And then the final one, which is the here we go. So this one is basically, like I said, it's a sort of race assault course here, and it's cool. So this is the Niffler. There you go. See a fully modelled Niffler, I might add, <laughs> which is actually models and made in the you know, main console port. So this is what it basically looks like. Obviously higher detail, but yeah. And yeah, this is the Care of Magical Creatures level. So this is what it looks like, this level, for everyone that's this always wondered. Nice. This is it. Um, Put it in the game. It's not finished, Release I don't it. think, of course, but this is it. You know, the full level right there. There's probably more to it, I'm sure, that they were going to go with, but mm. yeah, look at it. You know, you even got a nice waterfall next to Hagrid's hut and everything. It's just it's nice you know so it's, it's a nice idea and i liked this mini game just for being something different it's just kind of fun you know it's a nice little bit of fun and at the same time i get to see something that was basically cut from the final game put into a psp port of the game instead <laughs> why it was not in the actual final console release is a bit beyond me but you know, it it is what it is, I guess. It is what it is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, I'll leave that playing in the background. Otherwise, unless you have anything else to add here, Phil, then I think that's it for the rating stuff. Hey. Sounds like that's it for the rating stuff. <laughs> yeah. I will just quickly see what other people have said, if they've said anything here in the chat about these. Uh, we had a Niflin design before... Uh, FB FB is my brain just not managing to calibrate what FB stands for I don't know what does FB stand for <laughs> Firebase <laughs> I don't know I actually can't figure out what FB stands for <laughs> sorry Roberto you completely destroyed my brain with that one uh, 
Oh, Fantastic Beasts. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, yeah. Fair yeah. enough. That's why I blocked it out of my mental memory. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Understandable. Uh, yeah. So, I went away for a moment. What is this Spyro? <laughs> Not quite. He, uh, he isn't purple and he doesn't have wings. But, yeah. <laughs> I guess you could say he's somewhat like Spyro. So, um, anything else? Quickly. Uh, well, this is interesting. Didn't know this existed. Yeah, see, I don't think many people know that this stuff exists here. These mini games, I doubt it, because I don't think many people have honestly played the PSP version. I know you haven't, Phil, of course, but I don't think many others have. Um, so yeah, it's interesting to see what people think of these. I love the extra fire. <laughs> yes, that is good on the uh, cards. That is good. Party game at first. Hmm. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> Interesting. Okay, and then the poll wise, let's see what people said in the poll. So, 27% yeah, fun, 45% meh, fair enough, and 27% uh, said pointless. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I think that's fair enough. I can understand why people would say it like that, and I mean, in some ways, a lot of people probably haven't played them. They're just looking at them from a gameplay perspective. So, hey, fair play. But when you compare it to a lot of stuff in Goblet of Fire itself, believe me, it's like a godsend, this stuff. <laughs> Don't know if you would agree with that, Phil, from what you've seen of it. What do you think? Is Phil still there? I'm, I'm buying a there. PSP right now just to play these. Nice. It's already ordered. So what you want to say? What, PS Vita? <laughs> it's no longer supported, mate. Um, oh, dear. Cool, right. Well, anyway, that's the end of that poll. It was interesting to see what happened there. Um, so, yeah, fair enough. I think you should rank levels in other HP games too. Well. <laughs> okay. Okay. I guess it's time to talk about the ending stuff myself and phil have to show here because of course we've now come to the end of the rating series this is the end you know we've got through all of our planned games so philosopher stone to this goblet of fire here we are we're at the end this was by the way a bonus one that i just threw on phil out of the blue he was not expecting this <laughs> but lucky him he got it anyway but anyway I'm yeah i'm free i'm free <laughs> he's free yes we appreciate you all of course everyone throughout the whole of this series for actually sticking through it and showing the positivity in that around it because you know the series has done great all the parts i'm not sure about god but fire yet because i haven't seen but all the other parts have done very well and it was always interesting to actually hear what other people thought about this and so on as well originally this series was actually meant to be a video series which was just meant to be myself and phil sitting down and just recording this and then that was it but we scrapped that and instead decided to come and do a stream series which actually i think was the better choice and yeah i think more interesting yeah, it definitely made it more fun more interesting and actually it's nice to see other people have their points of view as well here yeah, which is the big deal with this series it was always to see what everyone right thinks about this not just what i think not what just phil thinks as you know even though we are big harry potter people i guess and we have a lot of harry potter related stuff on our channels and talk about it a lot it's nice to see what the actual community has to say because remember the thing about youtube and twitch and all that is there's always this thing where the content creator is always right the content creator is the one that has to have the say and so on but I don't believe in that. I know Phil doesn't believe in that I'm either. I'm always right. Yeah. I'm always right. I know you don't believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, here we didn't want any of that. We actually wanted to have everyone to have their say here. While we might not agree with what everyone's opinions are, that's absolutely fine. You know, that's what you get in life. Uh, we're not quite the woke community that will just cancel you on the spot for saying that you don't like something. <laughs> we actually let people have an opinion um yeah that's what this series was all about and i'm really happy that you know it went as well as it did all the way through so i'm pleased with that and i was to be honest with you kind of worried with goblet of fire that this would be 
a bit of a disaster, but <laughs> it actually has gone smoother than I thought it was going to, so that's fine. Yeah. Also, for people that did want to see any of the other parts in this series, the stream series, so Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, or Prisoner of Azkaban, they're all linked down in the bottom of this uh, description of this, so you guys can look at any of those as much as you like. So yeah, if you want to check up on those, go ahead. You can even get involved with them still by commenting down below on them or whatever that's absolutely fine anyway i have something special to show here before phil then has something to <laughs> show now <laughs> it's come to my attention that this alex and phil contract thing has become quite a meme um ever since i once in one of my streams said for a laugh because that's what I do, <laughs> that myself and Phil signed a contract together on what content we were actually going to make and do together for all of these streams and so on. So I thought what I would... Have you, what have you done? I thought I'd get in on the meme a little bit, and hopefully this will show up on camera. If not, I'll uh, attach it to the Discord for everyone and possibly a comment if YouTube allows me. Um, here you go. So please, please show... I hope everyone can somewhat see it. I'm trying to get some kind of lighting on it. Can anyone see that? An official contract. It is an official I contract. I can't read it fully, but Hang on. I can just I'll, about... I'll try my best here. Each party must... There you go. Hopefully that works. Two giant packs of Bertie Bot beans. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway like i said i've done my best there but i will uh <laughs> i'll put that in the discord fully and i will also put it if i can in the uh like comment section of this stream and maybe the other streams just for a laugh so yeah i thought i would get in on the meme and actually create the contract and just in case people could not read the bottom bit basically it says <laughs> basically it says at the top both parties must complete the following videos together during the years 2021 and 2022. If you're wondering why it's got 2021, it's because the Fellowship of the Ring review was in oh, yes. 2021, basically. But yeah, anyway, uh, Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring review, ranking of all the Philosopher's Stone challenges, ranking of the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets challenges, ranking of Prisoner challenges, ranking of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire levels. And then underneath that, we've got if contract is broken by any party, then each party must pay with two giant packs of Bertie Bot's beans. As the contract was not broken, unfortunately, we both don't get any Bertie Bot beans. But, um. <laughs> you know, it's, it's what it is. So there, <laughs> there is the contract. The contract is officially made. See you in court. I will see you in court, Phil. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. That was my fun little thing at the end. I uh, thought I'd get in on the meme. Phil, I know you've got something very exciting to show, which you told me about already, so yeah. show it to the chat. Okay, they're not done yet, but I'm planning on... So, basically, I found some high-res versions of some of the Harry Potter cards. So, I'm trying to, like... Make them into. I'm trying to like print them and make them look nice. So these are just practices because I bought, I printed them on different paper and I've got some, what's it called, holographic film that I've put on top. And these aren't done because I was going to do them double sided, but they kind of don't line up properly. But here's just a few. I actually can't see my camera, so I can't tell what they look like. Uh, Phil, can you tilt it a little me, bit to right, like let this me, side? I, let me open my camera on the Discord. So I can actually like see where I'm. Yeah, I was going to say tilt it, tilt it a little bit because of the light basically reflecting on it too much. Uh, so, yeah, okay. there you go. That's better. You can kind of see the. That's bloody impressive, man! They actually look really good. <laughs> They've come out well. Very yeah, well. Yeah, and these are just like so. The idea was I would do them double sided, but they don't quite line up properly because I've printed them on two separate bits and tried to stick <clears> them together, but uh -huh. it didn't really work very well. And they look really um, good. So they, look, come out great. they look good from far away, but like close up, you can see. But instead, I'm going to print like a kind of like the background bit, like the purple bit on the cards, and like just do a pattern on the other side, and then stick that all together with the holographic and then cut it out. And then, yeah, cute. They're really impressive. I like that. I also like the <laughs> fact that you've got like that sort of 
uh it's not like tinsel but like the sort of glowy effect on them what is that stuff yeah, called? So, what is it called? I can't remember what it's called. It's either like iridescent or holographic. I'm not sure what the proper term is, but mm. I just searched holographic stars film, blah, 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 and then found it online mm. and just ordered some and stuck it on. And it looks fun. Uh, it, it looks awesome. They've come out amazingly. Yeah. I it'd honestly. Be cool to, it'd be cool to, to get them all, but. I uh, would. Yeah. Well, you never know. I'm going to print all the ones that I've got the high res ones of anyway, for sure. Mm hmm. Actually, how big are those, like the print versions there? Are they really big or have you got like a. These? Somewhat... Yeah. How These are like are 10 centimeters tall. Okay. It was basically like the. It's kind of like a normal photo print <clears throat> size, that kind of mm -hmm. the width of like, yeah, like if, it were... if this was printed on like a horizontal bit. Yeah, okay. It's kind of like that size. Actually, yeah, because I, we... I, I asked someone who has some of the ones you can like buy, and I think they said they were about 10 centimeters tall. So, mm -hmm. would that mean that the other ones that obviously aren't so high quality actually probably would come out all right, wouldn't they? Mm, I don't think so, because I don't think they're quite, they're like 200 pixels. True, they and are if, quite. And small. if you want to print at like, you want to print at quite a high DPI. So mm. you probably want at least 150 dots per inch. But anyway, for now, they look fun. They they look really good. I'm actually yeah. very impressed by that outcome. <laughs> I have to say, they've done well. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to see if we can make you get the whole collection there. We we need that whole collection, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or else, how don't, are you going to compete? Um, don't let EA Games find out. Oh, they'll be around the door soon. They'll be like. Phil, open the door. <laughs> Glimmer, where are always the cards? <laughs> no, anyway, yeah, great. So that's my that's my little crafting project at the moment, mm. and I'll let you know when I've got them looking top notch, and I'll take some photographs and put them on. Definitely, uh, those those look great. I I love that. Definitely came out well. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, anyway, there you go. So you got to see our secret little announcement things now. I've got one last thing to say, and then we're basically yeah. going to end it off for good. So, while this might be the end of doing this series with Phil, and because Phil has finished his contract, as we've all seen, and <laughs> it has come to an end, doesn't mean, by the way, that I won't do any videos or streams or whatever with Phil in the future. I'm sure we will do something in the future. There's nothing planned, by the way. I want to make that clear. There is nothing planned, but, you know... It could happen. Um, I will not end this series completely. So I do plan on revisiting the earlier games again for the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 2 and looking at those challenges and rating those as well. I will not be doing it alone either. There is another <laughs> who oh. will be involved. There is a new... A new Phil, almost. <laughs> it's not possible. You can't replace me. I'm not replacing anyone. You can't replace anyone. It's just, uh, you know, we're taking it forward, and that's the way to go. And I know that you haven't played all those games yet, and, yeah, it's only fair not to spoil it all for you anyway. Yeah. But, yeah, so there will be more of those going forward. Now, as for the suggestion earlier of rating every single level in all the games... Well, wow. <laughs> I think that's a bit far. I'm not sure that one's ever going to happen, but you never know. It might, if I feel desperate enough. <laughs> but either way, there you go. That's the plan for the future with this series. It will carry on in some shape or form. I don't know when it will carry on just yet, but I will let you know, so don't worry. You will find out. But for the time being, you have at least got the complete series so far, from Philosopher's Day to Goblet of Fire with Phil and myself, and that's all you need to know, really. But anyway, I want to thank Phil, of course, especially for going through thank you. all of these streams, all four, especially this one being sprung on him at the last minute. <laughs> I do appreciate him being a part of all of these. It's been awesome to have you involved with these streams. It really has. And your opinions have been extremely interesting, actually. <laughs> you have some very good points, especially like in the earlier streams with the visual point of views. Really impressive points, actually. Um, so, honestly, if you guys haven't seen the earlier episodes, do go and check them out. There are some very valid points in all those, and I think you will all enjoy them. Anyway, 
Phil, do you have anything else you want to say before the end? Um, yeah, this was fun. It was good. I think this definitely worked better as streams for sure. Um, getting everyone else's opinions. Um, yeah, this is good. It's good to revisit all the games and compare and see how it's changed for the kind of went good and then to, for the worst, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, we, we ended it on a positive note. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> no it's good to have you here i appreciate you being in these uh like i said if we do anything in the future myself and phil for whatever it is don't worry we'll let you know <laughs> you will oh, not be all trip. completely in the dark unless phil really is desperate to keep you in the dark <laughs> all right well i will quickly read some of these uh <laughs> comments just before i end this for good this is your last chance phil to start messaging the chat message away mate <laughs> uh, I literally don't know what to type anything mate <laughs> uh, Roboto exciting news Alex um, what a fantastic end to the series man I love being a part of this community yes it's awesome being a part of the Harry Potter community it's awesome to actually I have to say for myself and I'm sure Phil feels the same way to be kind of big people in the harry potter community <laughs> it's not like we plan to be famous as daniel radcliffe i think yeah <laughs> we <laughs> never planned by the way just to make this very clear never in our lives did we plan to become so like high up i guess really in the harry potter community <laughs> we are high up you know i suppose we are people actually like us people do to be fair you know, talk to us about Harry Potter stuff quite a bit. There's a fair amount of the Harry Potter community that follows us, you know. That's true. <laughs> I've had enough people steal my videos too, so it proves that Sorry, I'm doing all right. <laughs> yes. Um, but no, anyway. it's it's nice either way. We're, we're really happy to actually have been able to actually get that opportunity in our lives. <laughs> so we thank everyone for that because without you lot, we wouldn't have that. So thank you for that. We mean that. <laughs> We really do. Maybe Phil will give you his wizard card collection as a reward. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. I know you just made them, but it's time to go. They're mine. <laughs> no. Uh, would you be interested in trading? Oh, no. <laughs> I know where that saying's come from. Would you be interested I in have trading? I have mucus. <laughs> Shove off with your flobberworm mucus. Oh, God. <laughs> and we have flobberworm mucus guarantees not to varnish <laughs> press on the yes button to accept the trade or the no button to decline <laughs> thanks Stephen Fry it's literally ingrained in my head forevermore now that <laughs> uh, oh what's this love uh, say yes Phil and Alex merch with these we'd all buy them interesting Fair enough. <laughs> they're all they're also nice. Um, what an awesome surprise, Phil. Love to see that. Please share more footage on the Discord. I'm sure he will share more footage. Don't worry on the Discord. I'm sure. Will you? <laughs> nah. No, I will, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty nuts. Okay. <clears throat> I think I'll do you a TikTok should... with me making these dressed as Ginny Weasley. <laughs> Oh god. That would get the views. Oh god. <laughs> I was tempted to do a video of me making um Butterbeer dressed as Ginny Weasley. I'm surprised you didn't come to this dressed as Ginny Weasley. <laughs> <laughs> She's not in this one, is she? Irrelevant character. True, she anyway. actually isn't, no. Um I think you should do a video about the cards. How did you manage to make them and such, Phil? Yeah, there you go, Phil. It's time to get your tutorial out. <laughs> oh dear. Cool. Right, well, there's some beans in the chat and everything. And, yeah, well, there you go. Can you two do a stream just talking about peeps? <laughs> I mean, I would not object to that, considering how much I love peeps. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Everyone knows that my Discord has got every peeps in it, pretty much known to mankind. It's always possible. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> all right well anyhow Ooh. we've been going on for a while now so once again yes. thank you everyone for you know being a part of the series and supporting the streams other than that 
I will see you in the future with future streams in this series. I will also see all you that are going to join me tomorrow at 8pm British Standard Time for the second part in the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets PS2 stream. That did really well the first time, by the way, so thank you for that. And I'm looking forward to doing part two of it. With that being said, I don't know what Phil's doing, so Phil will do whatever he wants. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing anyway. No, I'm kind of streaming Spyro at the moment and finishing the Shrek video that will be coming out in 2024. <laughs> Still can't rate. believe you played all those games. but <laughs> No. Anyway. Anyhow, thank you, everyone. And we'll see you in the yeah. future. Bye. Yes. <laughs>